Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Warm episode one, episode two. <sighs> what a day, what a day, what a day, what a day, y'all. Y'all gotta be working overtime. You can run the And let me know what y'all think about episode one and two. I literally just got done watching it about 28 minutes ago. Man. I just woke up from a little nap. And I said, man, let me watch these episodes. Dre, Drew, man. I thought they were calling her Drew the whole time. I didn't know they were calling her Dre. I thought they were saying Drew. Y'all know when I'm watching this show, I ain't watching this show. I'm watching this show. You know what I mean? I thought they were saying Drew the whole time. <laughs> My bad, y'all. that pose somebody else coming in get on my ass about it my bad for making a mistake y'all i apologize you can run but you can't hide what up meek our girl meek is back Y'all know me. I watch the shows just to watch the shows. See how they are. Let's stop this music. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. 
Very interesting. I'm not going to lie. I like the concept of this show. I knew when I seen the trailer for it that I'd be interested in it, but I thought it was going to be one episode a week. I didn't want them to drop all of them. So for me, I literally just watched it and just hop on here. Like I didn't get to dissect it like I normally would. But I like the concept of it. I wish the episodes were a little longer, maybe a 45 minute. But they squeezed a lot into each episode. And so far, it looked good. man. I don't know how three. Well, I started three. Did I finish three? I finished three. We got the boyfriend. We got the dude with the truck. Damn, who was in the third episode? Oh, the white lady. Oh, OK. Yeah, so I finished the third one. But we're only going to talk about the first and the second. What up, Candy? Jasmine, Santrice. <sighs> All right. Let's go. I like the darkness of the show. I like how each episode is just her moving along. We're not wasting time. We're not trying to figure stuff out. We know what we got to do. We got to get there. We got to get there now. So we're going to take it back. Way back, back in the time, Houston, Texas, April 2016, roughly seven years ago. I ain't been to Houston in about 15 years, but Houston, 2016, April. Is it hot in Texas in April? Because this show seemed like it. And when I'm hot and I'm in Texas walking around trying to find my way, I drink Simply Spike Lemonade. Watermelon especially. When I need to get the extra steps in each day to reach my goals, Simply Spike Lemonade. All right, enough of that. Simply cut the check. <laughs> Simply cut the check. Houston, Texas. This ain't no, hey, drink or fill my cup. Nah, this is Simply Spike Lemonade. This here is different. It got 5% real juice in it, I think it says. Well, it just says 5% juice. Uh, Yeah, zero grams of protein. So don't drink this before you work out. It's not going to help any. Hell, I would. But who come on? Come on. Houston, Texas, April 2016. We wake up. We're like, okay. Dre? She waking up. I'm like, all right. How old are they first? How old are they? Like 21, 22? Or is she like 19? Like how I didn't know I didn't know how old they were in this. Does anyone know? Oh yeah, Nick, we're trying to get on that simply lemonade, that simply spike lemonade. Not this I well, I do simply lemonade. I just can't say nigga shit. Fuck, I can't say stuff like that. So I want to go with the Simply Spike because, you know, it's for the adults. 21 and over, drink responsible. It's only 5% alcohol, too, man. That's enough. I can go play a full game of basketball after drinking two of those. <clears throat> but, yeah, let's see. Let's see if we can find out, like, they age or something. Or did they mention the age anywhere? Eighteen, nineteen. All right, cool. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking she was like 18, 19 years old. All right. Because the shit that I was watching, I said, man, do people... Yeah, because, I mean, they were getting beer. Let's just put her at 21. She was 21. Her sister, uh, Marissa, is, let's just say, 23. They're two years apart. 23 and 21. Bet. She wakes up. And the first thing we see is Swarm on the screen. So we already know it's about to be some wild, over-the-top shit. But that's what we're here for. This is exactly what we were expecting from this series. Toilet paper on the <laughs> on the dresser. Probably use that to blow her nose. <clears throat> Got the fan right in her face. You definitely going to need the fan in here. You know it get hot. But she wakes up. She's listening to Nyjah, and we love Nyjah. They got the pictures on the wall. I was like, all right, they've been Nyjah's fans for a while. 
Hey, put your favorite celebrity. Uh, who would be your Niger? Yeah, put who your Niger would be. <laughs> As a kid, who was your favorite artist growing up listening to? I ain't gonna lie, I used to love Aaliyah, man. When she died, man, that shit did something to me, man. I used to love Aaliyah. Damn. I didn't love Aaliyah enough to wild the fuck out like our girl, but who's your Tupac? I was listening to Pac, but I wasn't thinking about riding on his enemies for him. I was listening to Pac like, shit, I'm trying to ride on my enemies. <laughs> I wasn't trying to defend Pac. I, I thought Pac was straight. He's a death row. I'm like, he good. I don't need to ride on Pac enemies. I, I ain't trying to ride on Pac enemies. I'm, 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 if I'm going to ride on my ops, I'm going to ride on my own enemies, man. I can't be riding for Pac's enemies now. Now, I listen to a lot of Pac's. They call me U.S. H-E-R-R-A-M-O-N-D. Now, baby, tell me what you want to do. Okay, Usher. Shit, Rick James ain't here. Rick James is one of my artists. If Rick James said go do something, if somebody disrespected Rick James, oh, yeah, I'm in your house. I'm in your house. Hoodie on, hoodie on. We in your house. You disrespect Rick James. We on your ass. And Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. My girl wants to party all the time. Party all the time. Party all the time. What's up, Anjo? Well, guess what? Since this is 2016, we're gonna be talking about a lot of artists that came out back then, and even some when I was growing up. Cause one thing. I can tell you is back in the late 90s and shit going into the 2000s, no matter how cool you were, you knew an in sync song. <laughs> no matter who you were, Justin Timberlake was that guy. I'm like, damn, this nigga JT nice. He got to go solo. Please go solo. We need to hear that talent on your own, JT. Baby, bye, bye, bye. You told me you need me. Why did you leave me all alone? You must have me confused with some other guy. Cry me a river. Oh. But Niger got 44 million monthly listeners. Love on a cloud, 205 million streams. Don't want to leave, 143. Okay, she's doing her thing. Is Niger a real artist? Like, is it a real artist playing her or is it just all actresses? Just like we made up this stuff. It might sound crazy, but it ain't no lie, baby. Bye, bye, bye. Uh. I like, man, this is a catchy ass song. Them white boys, they singing their ass off up there. Look at them. Them motherfuckers sing, can't they? I ain't gonna lie to you. Them motherfuckers is nice. Now, I mean, I know Nyja is, I know she's not real. I'm saying, is the actress that plays her, is she like a real singer or something, or is just a straight, just actress? You know what I mean? I mean, I get... I mean, I get that, y'all. <laughs> I mean, I get that she's supposed that's where the like the sworn the beehive. I get that. I'm saying oh, okay. See, all right, now y'all get it. All right, y'all never seen it before. All right, let's look her up real quick, man. You know, we got it. Hey, these episodes are 30 minutes. We got all night, man. We about to look up the cast. We about to find out some stuff. Nareen S. Brown is Nija. Let's see. Let's see what Nareen S. Brown has been into. We're gonna get her some. Get her some shine also because, I mean, if we didn't have Nyjah, then we wouldn't have this show. So we got to show her some love. Mm. 
All right, Noreen, here we go. Oh, she's a writer. Noreen S. Brown was born in Queens, New York City. She's an actress and writer. Oh, damn, that's what's up. I know that right. If I write my... Hey, listen. If y'all ever see Mo's name on something that he wrote, nigga, I'm going to write myself a character in there. I'm going to write a character for me in that. I'm going to be in some... If I write it, I'm in it. I'm going to be just like uh, Noreen did. I'm going to make a kingpin or some shit, and that's going to be me. Y'all ain't going to see me much, but just know that's Mo playing that person. All right, cool. That's what's up. She's a writer. You know what I'm saying? Oh, she's on Abbott Elementary. She was a teacher. All right. So she getting some roles. Bad. That's nice. Mm-hmm. We show our people love on this channel. All right, well. Now, we'll address Nyja properly. Y'all talking about she made up, she fiction or not. She the writer. We didn't even know we were watching the writer. All, of this. All right, I fuck with it. I, fu I like that. I like that. That's how you're supposed to work. Get two checks. I'm going to write a story and I'm going to write me in the story. Nigga, I'm getting paid for everything. In front of the camera and behind the camera. All right. I like the hustle, Miss Brown. I like the hustle. Yeah, I bet y'all know who Nyjah is now. 44 million monthly listeners. Yeah, we know who Nyjah is now. Miss Brown, the writer. They got the Nyjah tickets. All right. Oh, so they went December 2013. Shit, they went in 2002. MTV TR. Look, damn, the tickets was $50 with $675 in tax. $70. 10 years later was $70. $14 in tax. All right. Not bad. All right. I like that they went into the details. Hey, look at this drawing. This shit terrible. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Beyonce watched it. She's probably one of the first people to uh, watch it. All right, Nyjah, what she got? 13 million followers. The evolution has begun. She only got 17 tweets and 13 million followers. Who she thinks she is? Hey, how much y'all paying? How much y'all pay for those Beyonce tickets? They talking about for these tickets that she got right in front of the stage, $1,800 a piece. Hey, Torn, I ain't got nothing. I didn't say Nigel was trash. I just showed Nigel love. We know I'm good with Nigel. Now y'all see why I looked up her information. I'm giving her the respect she's supposed to have. Y'all motherfuckers tripping. Oh, she made up. She actress. All right. Well, when this motherfucker <laughs> Dre comes to see your ass, and don't say Mo ain't warn you. I just showed her love. I just showed Nigel love. $1,800 what y'all doing? 1800 what y'all doing that's 36 o's that's 36 of them things because she got two what y'all doing y'all turning up for y'all sister or y'all paying y'all rent what y'all doing let me let me find out y'all in here wilding out like that we getting the tickets or we paying rent Now, nigga, I'm not counting nobody's pockets. I'm not counting nobody's pockets. All I'm saying is it's $1,800 a ticket. Are y'all willing to pay $1,800 to see the queen? Oh, everybody paying rent now. How are these artists going to... How are they going to stay alive? 
if y'all won't go pay these prices for their concerts. Y'all need to go pay these $1,800 tickets. Hey, listen to me. I don't ever give you guys great advice, but today, listen to me. and Listen to me one time only. Go spend that 18. Hey, go spend that 18. Don't worry about the rent. Go spend the 18. Don't worry about the rent. Go spend the 18. Don't worry about the rent. Go live a little. That's what somebody told me. They said, Mo, you only live once. And I started thinking, you know, you're right. I do only live once. So why pay the rent? Why pay rent? You know, I'm starting to think, why am I paying rent? I only live once. I only live once. Why should I pay rent? You know what? What is today? The 20th, the 21st? Oh, yeah. We're not paying rent. I'm going to it. What we got? 10 days? Yeah, 10 days before the end of the month? I'm about to get online right now. I'm going to look up these Golden State Warriors tickets, and I'm about to go spend my 18. Fuck rent. I'm about to go spend my 1800. Y'all think, man, y'all ain't out here representing like y'all supposed to. You only live once. That's what they keep telling me. That's versus and oh here we go right here March thirty first we ain't paying rent we about to see what these tickets is going for man we don't care if the prices change nigga we want eighteen hundred dollar tickets fuck you talking about the prices might change I don't care oh man here we go here we go right here bet all right y'all. So this ticket right here, 1850. Man, come on, the computer going all slow now. The computer don't want me to buy the tickets. We about to buy the tickets right now. We about to spend our 18. We ain't paying rent. Come on now. Load up. Oh, look at this. They want to shut the website down on me. Google paid us, but Candy, this is my first time getting a check. You remember, I wasn't getting paid from YouTube in uh, December, January, and Fe I just got my channel back in February. My check was nothing. My, I gotta get. That's why you see me on here grinding. Y'all see my face on here a little bit more. I just got the page back. I do need them YouTube checks to kick back in, so I gotta get y'all back online with me. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Hey, this check that I got today, Terry. I won't say terrible. I won't say terrible because I respect that y'all was on here. But that shit was like, I think I got like two eighty. Matter of fact, I can tell you the exact amount that I got paid since I got my channel back. I got two eighty three sixty three. <laughs> from me getting my channel back in February to now, I got 283. So I need to get back on my grizzy. But yeah, man. So now you're going to see me on live a lot. We got to get back to where we were. But $1,500, I want y'all this month to go, hey, treat yourself if you got it. If you got it, treat yourself. $1,800. This is not financial advice. All I'm saying is on this show, she spent 32 plus taxes. So we're going to go ahead and just say 3500 No, that's 36 My bad. We're going to go ahead and say $4,000. Yeah, my bad. We're going to do 4000 She just spent $4,000. Uh, well, Kimberly, they didn't take my channel, but... One of my videos started doing good. Next thing I know, they talking about reuse content. I'm like, nigga, it's me talking the whole video. So I got flagged in December. I had to reapply in January. It didn't work. So then I just started deleting all my videos that I had. 
all the live streams we did on uh, Tubi. Cause I had no copyright strikes, but I got rid of all of that. And then in February, they finally approved it. So from February to now, I've been monetized. Well, from February 22nd or was it the 12th? Something like that. It was the middle of the month, though. It may have been right before Valentine's Day. I got it back. But hey, man, it's the risk we take. Spend that $1,800. This is not financial advice. Do what you got to do. But $1,800? 36 for two, four after tax. Bro, let me tell you how they living. Matter of fact, after we check out, we're going to let you know how they living. Now, we know what happens right after this scene. She goes in the hallway, her sister in there, they doing their thing. You know what I mean? They got the tickets for May 7, 2016, 8 p.m. NRG Stadium, Houston, Texas. You got everybody on Twitter going crazy. Guess I'm picking up a second job. <laughs> The next guy, Bruce Elector, talk about buy me a shirt, please. Prayer hands. Corey talk about who'd you have to kill for those? Uh, day number one, Nigel talk about evolution tour is going to be incredible. So everybody going crazy over these tickets. You see it all the time. Beyonce just dropped what last month or something like that. See everybody in there talking about they're gonna go buy them. They talk about the price range of this and this. I'm like, y'all really want to go see her that bad? Now I'm not knocking the hustle, do your thing, but come on, man. If you ain't got it, man, don't hurt yourself trying to, like, there's always going to be a tomorrow. Bill's always going to be due. You may not pay that rent today, but if you don't pay it by the middle of the month, next month your ass going to be on your ass. Got to make the right decisions. So if I see anybody spending 1800 to go to a ticket, I better not hear you complaining about nothing else in the world. I don't want to hear that gas is too high. Eggs is too high. I don't want to hear you talking about nothing else because you decided to go spend $1,800 on a ticket. Now, if you got it, go do it. If you've been saving, go do it. But if you ain't got it, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Come on now. But she got them tickets, man. She's like, yeah, yeah. We're going to turn up for that birthday party. Hey, what's the most you spent on a sibling? What's the most you spent on a sibling? Terry said forty five hundred. They had to eat and get their hair. Hey, I ain't even, I ain't even mention all that. I ain't even think of all that. Shit, you better go out there. I mean, I don't know, man. You right? That's shit, that's a lot of money on top of it. Well, Kendall, I got. I, I keep forgetting. I, I be asking you these questions. Me and you grew up differently. Like you was you kind of like how I'm not I'm not calling you them, but you like how the Banks family is. That's how you grew up. You know, what I, mean? I didn't grow up like that. So we we ain't never really spend bread like that. But I know one thing. I know one thing. Four thousand dollars on a birthday. Man, me and my brother, we went on a three-week excursion in November when we went over to Asia and shit. I took care of the flights, but I can't cover the rooms and everything. I get you your flights. Don't worry about the flights. I'll handle that. You just worry about your rooms and eat and everything. You know what I mean? That wasn't no 4000 That's only like maybe like two bands total. But four for a birthday? And I had it. She ain't got it. She ain't got it. I went to see Future several times, but this is when I was in Vegas. I'm hitting the club. He just going to be in there. Shit, I ain't going to lie to you. Man, I'll buy my tickets early. You think I'm about to pay $100? I mean, I'd do it, but if I can pay $75 after tax on a ticket like early in the year, I can take a $75 hit. But I'd rather pay that than 120, 150, like at the dope, man. Fuck that. You know what I'm saying? Future my dog, but I don't like that nigga that much that a nigga gotta, man, I ain't going broke over a damn person. 
not saying it's going to go broke, but man, when I go places, I got me a little, you know, I know what I want to spend. I can spend a little more, but I, I know what I want to spend. And at the end of the trip, when it's up under what I wanted to spend, oh, that's a great trip. Yeah, but Rain, you saying $300, like $300, $1,800. You spent $300 for your parents together, $300. And if even if you did extra stuff for them, you still had a $1,500 cushion to get to that $1,800 for one individual ticket. You see what I'm saying? $300, you got, you got the mission accomplished. 1800 for just you and you did all of this for your family for three 1800 300 i'm going with this 300 over here candy said 480 to see usher in vegas bianca said i spent 900 on drake tickets see you said drake tickets so you got more than one you got more than one for nine hundred dollars. This is eighteen hundred dollars. So whatever, whatever you bought Bianca for nine hundred dollars, however many tickets you got, double that, and you still got more tickets than her, and you're going to see Drizzy. But you got to remember, she spent eighteen on herself, eighteen on her sister, probably like four thousand total. The reason I'm doing this is because we're just showing you her character and how obsessed you with. So I'm trying to let you guys understand like the concept of money and what you spending when you ain't got it. This right here, hey, no disrespect. No disrespect, Dre. I fuck with you, but digger. You digging a hole. And that's go and one thing we know she's good at, that's digging holes. She spent two thousand on someone that didn't give a f. Hey, that's unalive for it. We're gonna get there. Remember, we just in the first thirty seconds of the episode. Thirty seconds in, and we looking at it like, man, she is wild for that four thousand dollars. Uh, right now, y'all might not want to hear this. But right now, she made more money than Tariq St. Patrick did in his first episode. She made more money. Well, she didn't spend more money, too. <laughs> she made more money in one or two episodes than Tariq has in his first episode. I'll just take it that. I said, damn, man, she putting in that work. So when I was watching this, I will say she's doing a hell of a job playing this. I'm not going to lie. Just seeing her demeanor and how she's reacting, I'm like, all right, cool. I like that. You know what I'm saying? It's different. That's cool. But it fits the storyline because it's like, all right, man, she do seem a little weird. No disrespect or anything, Dre. I'm just saying you do seem a little weird. Like when we be seeing her walking like, like a penguin, like what is he doing? Candy said 960 for me and my sister. 960 for two? That's still half of what she spent for herself. Now she goes in there, and of course, we can't show you this. But sis in there with her man. Now he in there. He hitting it with his flex. You know what I'm saying? Hit him with the flex. Hit him with the flex. They call me Mr. Hit That. Yeah. He in there going crazy. My Dougie. My Dougie. My, he going crazy. Now, Dre comes up to the door and Dre looking like. He looking at her. She looking at him. He looking at her. She looking at him. He's slapping on that tail. She looking at him. He looking at her. Then he start winking. He putting on the show right now. So, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. But she just watching. I'm like, man, what the fuck is going on here? I'm like, all right. 
She just watching him smash. What are they like friends? What are they sisters? Because at, at this moment, I didn't know. So I'm looking at that. That's how they getting down in this house. And why was that door that wide open? That door was wide open. But hey, man, this is that young puppy love right here. So she looking. We got the same socks on, too. She got some Nike socks on. Nah, them probably Niger socks. I thought she had on the white Nikes. But I say we dressed alike. Rather she sees him in there thrashing that. The sister going crazy, not looking up, knowing nothing. It was hot as hell in that house. Franklin Saint was in there sweating his ass. I was like, damn, nigga, you sweaty as hell. Turn a fan on or something. I can't be getting that sweaty in there and then be body to body, man. Hell, now get your sweaty ass off me. Well, you ain't got to go too far, girl. You ain't got to go too far. Well, you ain't got to go too far. But, nigga, we not about to be in there sweating like that. It looked like somebody came in there do a bucket of water. I like, nigga, open a window or something. Nigga, it is too hot in here to be sweating like that. Fuck all that. But, hey, man, it is what it is. Now we got to go to the Briley Market. 1644 party surplus. Oh no, I thought it said surplus. It says party supplies. Beer and wine, Texas made, ATM inside. Hey, Texas don't serve liquor on Sundays. Is that Texas? What kind of rule is that? Don't serve liquor on a Sunday, nigga. <laughs> you need to be serving liquor every day. Nick said, Do I wish that was me? No, nah, man. I ain't look. She's an attractive woman, but I'm not about to be in that motherfucker sweating like that, man. I don't care who it is. Y'all ain't. Hey, Y'all be thinking because I get over here, I be talking some shit. I got some dignity, okay? I know what I'm worth, all right? <laughs> yeah, I make fun of myself, but hey, I know who I am. <laughs> why would I, why would I want to be up in that motherfucker, man? I wouldn't be hanging out in this house. Look at these fucking blinds. Man, if I'm, man, I'm, look, you got to come to the crib. Man, look at this shit. It's like niggas just be over there. Arr, arr, arr. Man, I'm not hanging out over here. Y'all must not be listening to the stories I told y'all when I was growing up. I don't play around with this kind of shit. Man, I was into it with niggas growing up. Man, I ain't had time to be over here in houses that look like this. Hell no. I be damn, I'm about to lose my man. Hell no, man. We could meet up somewhere. I'm not coming over to that crib. Hell no, nah, I went over there one time and seen this motherfucker was crazy looking on the inside. I don't know who they related to. Man, please. I ain't about to be over this motherfucker. And I'm telling you that as an 18-year-old, 19-year-old, that's how I was. I was like, hell no. Nah. Nigga, the gremlin was in the hallway on these blinds. That motherfucker. This is exactly why your parents tell you don't look out the blinds, open them up, because look at this shit. This shit just don't look right in the house. You didn't understand it as a kid. It just quit. Go like that. But when you get older, that, that shows you. Niggas with blinds like that at their house, they don't give a fuck about life. They don't care. Some of the blinds are going up. Some of them are going... They don't care. They won't even take the time to just... You ain't even got to stay there long and do it one-handed like an old person. You just straighten that shit up a little bit. But yeah, that nah, nah, neat. I mean, she could come to the crib, but y'all know how I feel about that, man. Y'all seen Kato? You seen how Kato was living? Nah, I ain't gonna be like I got the best decor in the world, but I'm chilling. 
I'm chilling. My blinds don't look like that. You know, when you go to somebody's house and go in the blinds going out to the balcony, the big long ones, some of them be turned the other way. You look at that and you're like, man, what the fuck? Ain't nobody going to fix that. You know what I mean? You just look at that like. I wonder if they ever going to fix that. I can't, you know why I can't go over there? Y'all want to know why I can't go over there? And I'm going to be honest with you right now. Because, man, look. I wear white socks. I can't walk around her spot in white socks. My shit going to get dirty as a motherfucker. I can't get comfortable over there. I can't go over there and just be chilling. I got to be on my P's and Q's. The flow going to be dirty. Hell no, I can't be over there chilling. I like me some fresh white socks sometimes. You know what I mean? But if she wanted to come to the crib, okay. Okay, then. Now, I'm not opposed to you coming to the crib. <laughs> you can come to the crib. I go get a room or something. I got to get the room. You can't get the room. I got to get the room. Yeah, I, you know what I'm saying? we can do it that way. But I wouldn't be over here in this motherfucker kicking it. Shit, I'll hang out at the Brilly Market, though. She going here, and of course she listening to Nisha. I was trying to look and see if there's anything I would purchase in here, if there's anything of interest. I don't know what this is. Oh, Blue Diamond. Was that the baseball uh, seeds? She's like, hey, 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 hey. Oh yeah, oh neat. I'm, I'm <laughs> oh I'm clapping. It's just not in that house. <laughs> just not over there. I'll be damned. <laughs> I like to be comfortable, okay? I like to be comfortable. And I can only really be comfortable in my house. I'm not about to get naked at somebody else's house in case some niggas come in. Now I gotta fight these niggas naked. <laughs> now I gotta try to pick everything up and dip out. No, 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 no. But she in here listening to that Nyjah. I'm on a cloud up in the sky. All the girls know that they're worth more than they could imagine on the cloud. So she listening to the number one hit. And the old lady, she in there, hey, 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 hey. But she can't hear because she got Nyjah in there. Now she checking up. Looking in the phone, seeing what's cracking. She said, can you pick up some tampons? Yes, I got you. She eats at Frenchie's too. So it looks like Nigel got a deal at Frenchie's. She laughing at it. <laughs> then she said, I'm staying at K's tonight. She said, okay. And then she said, can you pick up some Frenchie's? And the old lady said, hey, 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 hey. Your friend that you always with? She ain't paid, man. You got to pay $5. I'm calling the police. How you going to call the police on me, nigga? I don't owe you $5. But now we're looking at them saying, wait. How much did they say that she owed for Marissa? Does anybody remember the dollar amount that she owed for Marissa? Nah, my younger days, it was $5, right? Now, do y'all think the clerk was lying or old girl was lying? Marissa, who you think was lying out of the two? The old lady or her? Who y'all like? Be real. Who y'all think was lying?
No, I'm just asking a question. I'm just watching the. I, I'm just watching episode one and two. I want to know what y'all think. What y'all think? Y'all think Marissa telling the truth? Because she did just spend four thousand dollars, so she ain't got five dollars to cover this. Or did she not cover it? Or did she cover it? Because she says she ain't had five dollars. Wait, 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 wait. I'm confused. Are they sisters? Or are they friends? Ashley said Marissa was lying. Are they sisters or are they just friends? I thought they were sisters. Was I watching the same show as y'all? I mean, I can't. I mean, I am foster sisters. Oh, okay. So I'll probably find that out later on. Her family took Dre in. See, I only watched three episodes, so I, I'm not too sure. And that's why I say I got to. I'm going to hop on here with y'all when it's fresh because I knew I wasn't going to be like, I mean, I'm paying attention to the storyline. But I was kind of dozing in and out. I mean, I know everything that's going on. Once I see a, once I see an image, I can tell you what's going on. But, man, I wasn't in like all the details. Foster Sisters, like episode six. Damn, I got three more, seven, four more to watch. All right. I'm going to get to them this week. Hold on. Let's go. When I forget shit, I drink the Simply Lemonade. I'm trying to find my damn pen. Oh, damn. <laughs> that motherfucker over here charging up. Damn. All right, let's go, man. We all think Marissa was lying. Five dollars. Buster. She said, you need to pay? Oh, I called the police? I would have told her, call the fucking police, nigga. I don't owe you five dollars. I'm not paying you five dollars. What they got in here? They got the, the padlocks in here, the master lock here. They got some little beanies. I don't know what these are up here. Oh, I need to get me some of them lottery tickets. Oh, man, this is that elephant shit right here. Don't take none of these rhino pills, y'all. Man, that shit a myth. That's what I heard. I ain't never took none of that shit. Oh, yeah, be 21 and drink responsible. Sometimes. We drink and we forget our time, you know? But I tell you one thing, when you drink a Simply Spike lemonade, you ain't gonna go on a rampage like this young lady is about to. And we just get it started. Well, she gotta come up with five dollars because Marissa ass got Marissa ass got caught stealing fucking corn dogs. Be real, were y'all eating corn dogs in 2016? How you get caught stealing corn dogs? I said corn dogs. Hey, what that look like? Hey, man, you getting arrested. They done brought you downtown. What you in for? Nigga, I stole a couple of corn dogs. You did what, nigga? Oh, I stole some corn dogs. Why? <laughs> Why? What up, Ty Season? My boy got the K-Flock picture up. <laughs> <laughs> my boy got a K-Flock picture up. Free uh, K-Flock, man. They tried to hit my dog with the Rico, man. I might have to fly up there and help the little man out. Give some of my knowledge. Man, I got a homeboy named Sax I can put on the case. Now, she get to the crib, April 2016. Now, Khalid here, here, he tearing this shit up. Frenchies, Frenchies. What do you think they got? There's a. Have y'all ever been to this uh, fast food place called Culver's? Culver's or something like that? That's what Frenchies kind of look like. Let me see what this Frenchies restaurant is. Is that a real place in Texas? Frenchies? Or they made that up for the show?
Frenchy Swarm Restaurant. Oh, yeah. See, I've been to a Culver's. I went to one in Arizona. It was a little bit different. Oh, it is a real place, y'all. Man, I thought y'all was historians. I'm not historians, but Houstonians. All right, delicious fried chicken and Creole cooking served in H Town and the surrounding areas since 1969. All right, I'm thinking that this is Frenchie's right here. Oh, it is. Okay, shit. Here we go. Of course, we're not playing the audio on that. They're gonna be trying to hit us with the blam blam. All right, they got crawfish egg rolls. Hey, y'all with the crawfish egg rolls? All right, they got crawfish egg rolls up there. <laughs> hey, Verdell Auto Repairs and Mobile. That motherfucker said, where the location at? Nigga, where the location? Look at that. That motherfucker trying to get in there. Look where it at. He said, where's this location at, nigga? He seen that deal February 22nd to April 8th. He said, nigga, I want some crawfish egg rolls, nigga. Fuck what y'all talking about. He said, where's this location at? Tell me now, nigga. Scott Street for sure. Okay, Scott Street. Hey, shout out to Scott Street Frenchies. All right, that's what's up. Nigga, I thought this was Lamar in here working. All right, man. Shout out to Frenchy's Chicken in Houston. You know what I'm saying? We got to show love to the people, man. That's what's up, man. It's cool that they put something real in there. All right, let's see what our, our boy is doing. Frenchy products are sold in HEB. I don't know what HEB is, but hey, congratulations. Oh, is this little flip? Oh, they ain't little flip. I'm about to say I thought they had little flip on here. Hey, Frenchie, send me a box of chicken, my niggas. Oh, give me the chicken box. Give me the chicken box. Let me get this. Chicken, some fries, and a rope. But I want it hot though. Don't be trying to send it where I gotta warm it up and nothing. I want it hot. All right, bet. Let's get back to the show. Houston grocery store, H-E-B. Oh, okay. Like I said, I don't know nothing about Houston, man. Shout out to Houston. I like seeing that where they put real locations in shows. Got to show love to the community, man. If y'all want me to, I can go down to the uh, to this little lake and a little creek down the street from my dad's house. I can catch y'all some crawfish if y'all want. I ain't going to charge you much. Probably... $35 a pound. Because it's going to take a lot to find a pound out there. But he in here tearing the Frenchies up. I ain't even checking to see if they had like uh, mozzarella sticks or anything. Oh, well. I wonder if they macaroni good. Y'all think they got good macaroni? Like a chicken spot got to have some good macaroni. But anyway, he tearing it up. And Marissa come out here after getting toe up. She said, well, guess what? I'm about to do the hair and makeup of oh I don't even remember who it was, but somebody we going on the road and I need you to cover tonight. So she like, damn, for real? Say like, hell yeah, hell yeah! I need you to turn up for me tonight. I need you to go to work because I got to be at the concert at eight o'clock. You got to be there at nine. Now I'm not telling the old girl that you're gonna be here doing the closing because she would never let it happen. So go in there and handle it. And then we start hearing. Uh, Khalid talking. I'm like, uh, what is wrong with this nigga, man? I said, but what is what's this dude on? He's like, oh yeah, man. That's how she keep her body tight. Not eating this motherfucking Frenchies. This motherfucking Frenchies gonna make you thick. 
This motherfucker Frenchie's going to hit all the right spots. This motherfucker Frenchie's ain't going to keep that shape right. This motherfucker Frenchie's going to put some weight on. I'm talking about heavy. Real heavy. You know what I mean? No, I think she pretty. No, I think she pretty. Nee said, Damson got one American accent. Shit, I only got one too, and that's being a real nigga. <laughs> that's all I got is one. I'm a real nigga. But he ain't here. They hugged up. Nigga, you know it's hot. This nigga ain't put a shirt on all day. Nigga still cooling off from this motherfucking. You know what I'm saying? This money, this Monday morning workout. He was in there putting in work. Now he in here eating up all the food. Knowing damn well they ain't got no money. Fucking Marissa ass. No, she owed a corner store five dollars. Stole some corn dogs up out of there. Told her to pick up some food. Knowing goddamn well she ain't got no money, and we know she ain't got no money because she just spent four thousand dollars this morning. I said, how are they living like this? And Neek wanted me to go over there and wish that it was me. Hell no, I'm not hanging out over here. We all like I don't know about y'all, but we always grew up like man, them sisters over there they cute, but man they like. Man, they house dirty. You know what I mean? Like, that was a thing growing up. Like, man, they house is dirty. And, man, they cool and all, but, man, they house dirty. You're like, damn, they house is dirty. I wouldn't even get. You know what I'm talking about, man. Come on now. Hey, OT, this show is straight. I ain't going to lie to you. This show is straight. It's different. It's fast-paced. But each episode, it's getting straight to the point, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, at first, you're going to be looking at the, the main girl, Dre. You're going to be looking at her like, uh, she's kind of weird. But it works with the show, man. It's it's cool. I watched the first three episodes literally an hour ago. But it's cool, man. Make sure y'all hit that like button. We ain't even finished a box of Frenchies yet. So she looking, he talking some shit. She said, man, don't pay them over at the corner store, man. Don't pay them at the corner store, nigga. They were going to call the police. What do you mean don't pay them, nigga? I ain't mo. I couldn't get up out of there. We know she can barely run, man. We seen her run this episode. I said, man, what the hell? It ain't me. As soon as that motherfucker would have told me it was some $5 for something else that I know I ain't paid for, I mean, that, that I ain't buying, headphones in. I don't give a fuck what this lady talking about. I'm leaving. Real life, I said, I ain't seen nothing yet. Like I said, I only seen the first three. They were straight. I'm going to watch. I'm going to probably watch. I ain't going to lie to you. I'm probably going to watch the last four, probably. Probably Wednesday night. I'll probably start watching them again. I got some other videos I want to make before, like, Snowfall and the Power episodes come out. But I don't know. It's pretty cool. But, dog. All the money is spent. We less than five minutes into the episode and all the money in the house is gone. And then we got Khalid in here to talk about, yeah, man, I got some homeboys, man. Were you ready? You know what I'm saying? Do your thing. I got some. I'm like, what the fuck is this nigga home? What y'all think about our boy Khalid? They got that air conditioning unit in the wall. I told you, you need to turn that motherfucker on, nigga. You need to turn that motherfucker on. And they got that motherfucker in the wall, too. We had ours in the window. My dad wasn't about to cut no hole in the wall. Hey, in y'all windows, did y'all used to put a stick in the top of the window so nobody could open the window up? <laughs> You put a stick in the window, and then when you want to lift the window up during the day, because some of our windows didn't stay up on their own, you take the stick from the top, open it up, and you put the stick up under the window. <laughs> so the window will stay open. We used to put box fans in the window. Man, those are good times. I mean, let all right. We 
we all agree that he was on some creepy shit. <laughs> Get out of the way. I said, man, there's something wrong with this nigga, man. <laughs> I said, it's one thing to be trying to get at your girl's sister, but nigga, you going at it a little different. I'm like, oh, what are you doing, bro? But, man, I don't know, man. That was some creepy shit for her sister to be watching. Like, if I'm in there doing my do, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm covering up. I don't want nobody looking at me. I did not consent for her to look at my body. I'm, oh, oh, yeah. Mo too, nigga. Mo too, nigga. I don't want you looking at me. I'm going to finish what I'm doing, but I don't want you looking at me. She was in there staring, and now he on some weird shit talking about, yeah, man, I got some homeboys, man. They be waiting to do this. Like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> hey, bro, you got to chill, dog. Hey, you got to, hey, if you got a homeboy like this, you got to tell your man to chill. Hey, nigga, you doing too much, man. You wild it out, dog. All right, we we get it. You're trying to get at the sister, but you're going too far, nigga. This is just outrageous. And you ate up all the food. What up, Trill? Well, dog, why are you hooping here? Hey, man, I'm about to give me another uh, Simply Lemonade, and we're going to jump back into it. We're going to kind of speed it up a little bit, so I'm going to try to get this within. Well, damn, we had an hour. I was going to say two hours, but shit. We're going slow as hell. But I do want to have some free time at the end of this, because I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow, but. I'll be right back. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. We ain't even got to no killing yet. You can run. Simply Spike Lemonade. When I want to buy my Nazi tickets to any concert and I don't want to give a fuck about spending $1,800, Simply Lemonade just won't do it. I need to drink Spike Lemonade. I don't give a fuck. Please drink responsibly. 21 and older. 5% alcohol, 5% juice. That's 10% real. 10% 10% real. 10% real. They say, Mo, why you don't drink no hard liquor? Because, nigga, I get on this motherfucker for five to six hours. You think I want to be on this motherfucker drunk? I just want to be cool, lifted. On the cloud. <laughs> Check it out. Night just number one song. But calm your dogs down. If you got a homeboy like this, calm his ass down, man. He too hype, and he just going to get himself in trouble, bro. He's going to put somebody in harm's way. But she goes in the room. She's sitting down, and she's thinking. She's thinking, damn, that 4,000 hit me hard. Pause. What up, Angel? Sakar, what's going on? What's going on? Make sure y'all hit that like button. My bad. I had to check something. All right. Now, she in the room. She chilling. We got all the artwork on the wall. Man, we, we super fans right now. She listening to the music. And then this nigga comes in the room. I'm just like, hey, bro, you, like, you moving differently. There's no reason for him to be in this room. But he comes in, like, hey, what's up now? And then 
when I thought back on it, I was like, why does she dislike him so much? But she tells him, hey, look, I got Nyjah tickets for Marissa's birthday in a couple weeks. We're going to go to that as a surprise. He going to say, oh, I was thinking about going to Atlanta with her for her birthday. She's like, oh, well, I got tickets. So you thinking those tickets are going to trump it because the tickets are paid for it. Nigga, you ain't got nothing ready to go to Atlanta. But he ain't here, and she's like, yeah, Nyjah, man, she's the queen. Looking like Nyjah, man, she ain't no different than you and I. She ain't no different than you and I, and that's how I feel. But I ain't going to say that out loud because I know what Dre be on. But that would have probably been the same response I would have gave. Nice. I don't know no Nigel. I don't know no songs of her. I mean, we all know a Beyonce song. We didn't all heard Beyonce song. Beyonce took over the world, so I'm sure we all know who Nigel is in 2016. But that don't mean we just listen to the song. Like, no, the single is like, oh god damn, how many times they're gonna play this song? But shout out to Beyonce. And that's how he's feeling. He's looking at Nigel like, mm, she's just a regular person. But to some people, that hits home hard. And this was the first triggering moment. Nigel just a regular person. He now knows that she has tickets to the concert. We got the we love Nigel pictures on the wall. They show it so many times to let you know we love Nigel. We love Nigel. We love Nigel. We love Nigel. Nigel, 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 Nigel. Yeah, die line, die line, die line. No, 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 Nigel. Now, the girls get together and she started to do her makeup a little bit. And this is where we discovered that she she ran a fan page. She ran a fan page. It's kind of like the Barb's. Kind of like the Beehive. Kind of like everybody. What Cardi B got? Ain't Cardi B got something? The Bardies or something like that? Everybody got something. You know what I mean? Everybody got something. But it turns out they used to run this page together as a collective when they were younger. Now, Marissa is saying, hey, man, that shit was cool, but they made your friends. Now, that's where I got to I got to I got to step in on this one. Marissa, now, you know, you're wrong. Mo and the Moets, we like family. We like friends. Y'all cool. Y'all ask me something. I'm going to be truthful with y'all. I ask y'all something. Y'all going to be truthful with me. We different. We different. She talking about them ain't your friends. I said, man, them is, man. Eric be hitting me up on Instagram. I ain't, I don't know who Eric is. Eric started following me on YouTube and that shit. We hit each other up. We talk on Instagram. He send me memes. I send him memes. We talk about sports, all kinds of shit. Rico's, all kinds of shit. That's how friendships are made. But the only difference is I actually communicate with y'all as me. I ain't on here pretending to be Mo or giving y'all all the information about Mo. See, she's running it. She's talking about Nigel, the queen. Life wouldn't be the same without Nigel. Like, oh, that's a little weird. But hey, we're not going to call nobody weird. Some people, that's what they like. Some people, that's what they like. And Marissa, and I'm looking at Marissa like, all right. Let me let me straighten up. Let me get right. <clears throat> <clears throat> do re mi fa so la ti do all right so i'm looking at her i'm like all right cool i see what we on now she doing dre's hair we know about the twitter we know about queen niger for life the the twitter page it ain't verified if it was 2023 she got to pay that monthly a 11.99 for it Hey, Twitter, if I pay $11.99 for it, y'all going to be promoting shit? Or I just paying $11.99 for, for a check? If I'm paying $11.99 for that, hey, y'all need to be promoting shit that I'm putting up. If I put up a video or something, y'all need to be promoting for $11. Because if not, uh, 
I never blew up. I'm sorry, y'all. I'll let y'all down. You'll never see a blue check on my Instagram. You'll never see a blue check on my Twitter. Because, nigga, I'm not paying a monthly fee <laughs> for no blue check that don't get me shit. And I'm for damn show. Ain't about to be on here. A fan page of somebody else. Now, I had other Instagram pages where I was promoting shit, like videos and shit. When I was making, um, when I used to do skits and stuff, yeah, I had multiple Instagrams. I think I still got a couple, but I wasn't acting like nobody. <laughs> but they got 409,000 followers. The Swarm. Naja's biggest fan site. Joined the 2009. All right, they've been running this for a while now. Bro, who else is following? Nigel Maniac, Jessica Rabbit, Rabbit, Nigel is God. No, oh, yeah, they took it too far. Can can someone explain this? Like, did she try to commit suicide, or is it something else? I don't want to give away too much because I know people haven't watched it yet. I mean, I, I don't know what it is. Did she do this because of the love that she had for Nigel? And she was kissing on it. Or did she do it? What were y'all thinking when we seen this cut? Because, I mean, I still don't understand what it was from. Like, did she try to commit suicide or something? Are y'all saying I got to watch it figure it out? All right, all right. Well, I know she was just kissing on it, and y'all know how I feel about that. It made me think of uh, Jannara kissing on Liliana or licking Liliana's scar. I said, oh, that's terrible. It's like a girl talking about, Mo, let me kiss your scar on your head. Nigga, what? Hell no, nah, you ain't kissing the scar on my head. <laughs> that don't even make sense. But she kissing on it. But I don't know what she did. I'm going to have to watch it and find out. But they sit down and, hey, ain't going to hurt nobody. It's just smoking, y'all. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Locks and some weed, man, that's an attractive woman in my book. I ain't gonna lie to you. Locks and some good, good, good weed. Ooh, wee. that, that's a beautiful woman in my book. Ain't nothing better than just coming home and chilling and relaxing. She hopped up in the bed. She like, I don't like how I feel when I smoke. I don't like how I think. Boy, she taking some hits on this motherfucker. She talking about, fuck all that, nigga. I'm smoking, but we got to meet Nigel. I'm like, all right. Here we go. I'm thinking these two, they about to take off together. That's what I'm thinking. So all the hype that was behind this, like I said, I literally just watched the episode today. From what I was seeing, I was thinking these two, of course I knew that Dre was going to be the crazy one, but I thought that these two were about to be on an adventure for like, we're going to go follow them for like eight weeks. I'm thinking every week we're about to get an episode, an hour long. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, all right, cool. They about to turn up now. They getting high. They trying to meet Nigel one day. Man, it's about to get crazy. She's smoking a little bit of weed. And I was like, man, all right. Maybe you know, maybe it was early in the episode. Maybe she ain't weird. But then the next day she wake up talking about. Oh, shit. Mm. You know how it is in the morning. You roll over. You pick your phone up. You trying to look at it. 
but your eyes ain't really focusing yet. They still kind of watery and shit. You trying to wipe them, but you too lazy because you up under the covers a little bit. Now you got one eye open. You looking like this at your phone trying to read messages and shit. And your depth perception is all. You're like, damn, nigga, what the fuck? So you look and you pull down the notification at the top. You're looking at like all the news and shit that didn't happen. You're like, damn, let me see what's going on here. Let me see. Oh, what they talking about in the group chat? So now you're in the group chat. You're looking at the group chat. Damn, this nigga's acting a fool last night. I was went to sleep early. Nigga, I was high as a motherfucker. But then, then your other eye finally opens up. So you're going from one eye to two. You look. You look and that motherfucker say 7.15 in the morning. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You done did all this. You done went online. You done sent text messages to the gang. You done put gifts in the uh, comments. You in the Discord. You talking some shit, trolling some people. Then you look up and you realize that you late for work. You done did all this shit in 30 minutes. When you wake up in the morning, you get the most shit done on your phone in the morning when you wake up before you got to do shit. Now, the only way you don't do anything on your phone is those are the type of people we not trying to be. The people that get up in the morning, they look at their phone. Now they know that they got to get focused and get no, 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 no. When we get up in the morning, we got to check our phone. Rub the, the sleep out the eyes. We got to check our phone, see what's going down, what's cracking. And then... We worry about everything else. But she finds out that she's late. She said, I'm staying at K's tonight. She's like, all right, can you pick up Frenchies? Then she said, where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? This is the worst thing here. When you know you late and now other people know you late and they looking for you to be on time. This is the worst feeling ever. I don't care how bad I mess up at work, but showing up late to work when people are looking for you, that's the worst. Typically, whenever I showed up late for work, it was just on a regular day. Somebody may have came to the office, came down to my room, and was going to ask me something, but I wasn't there. That's how I'm late. But if I know I got to do something important, oh, I'm not late. If it's All right, work is important. All right, let me take that back. Work is important. But if I know I got a meeting or a presentation, oh, I got like eight alarms set. I know that morning I'm waking up earlier than normal because I got to wake up, take a shower to get focused. I got to take another shower. Like, let me take one right before I go so I could be up and at them. She show up the next morning. I'm looking at her face like... Is this all from like the makeup being messed up from sleeping in it? And why did they do her makeup and hair last night and she ain't like wrap it up or nothing? Is it just because she was high? Because <laughs> even when I had dreads, when I had braids, even when I got high, I knew to put my do-rag on. <laughs> that was a no-no, especially like that first week. The do-rag got to be on at all times that first week. You got to savor that first week of the braids. Man, I used to get my dreads, get them braided, wash it and braided up. Oh, man. You better believe. Oh, I ain't wear a do-rag then. I, I would wear a scarf, you know, a bandana around my shit. But she woke up, makeup everywhere. Hair toe up. Oh, no, Eric, man. If I can, man, no, I don't forget to take my glasses off, man. <laughs> All right. I ain't even noticed this shirt. Okay. Marissa got the, the, the undercut here. All right. We got the with the bobby pins. Okay. We in the middle of the mall with it. Jeezy told us your jewelry looked like it came from the middle of the mall. Well, the middle of the mall looked like where Mo need to be at. Yeah, let me give me a shirt real quick. I need a shirt that says Mo traveling. I need a shirt that says good is good, but good ain't good enough. I need a shirt that says I'm going to use my passport, bro. I need a shirt that says friend zone. I need a shirt that says Mo. 
You are. Cause I'm the realest nigga in this. Y'all know if <laughs> But you are not the father. <laughs> I am. Cause I'm the realest nigga in this. Y'all know if I am not the father. So she in here looking at her girl like, I just did your hair. Hey, look at homeboy. Look at homeboy. He's disgusted. He's disgusted. He's never seen anything like this in his life. Uh, TM, yeah, you could probably, you could put this in the realm of euphoria, but this is more of a, like a horror, you know what I'm saying? More of a horror type, in my opinion. It's cool. Like, hmm. Nah, they, they not the same unless you're just doing like young women. Like, other than that, I can't really compare the two. Cause it, they were going through like high school shit. This shit right here is some <laughs> run down the road, kill the motherfucker. They both good though. Hell, I watch Euphoria, man. I watch any TV show. If it's good, then I'm gonna watch it. Oh yeah, Kendall. I need a shirt that say ham booty. I want some ham booty. But they all looking in this friend right here. What was her name? What was her name? The hater right here. What was her name? The boss. What was her name? Like Sarah Amber or something? She's the boss talking about. Oh, I'm not going to let her do the closing. Like, damn. Hey. I'm glad. I'm glad that most uh, all the stores that I worked at, I never closed. I don't want to close. Man, I want to get off before then. When you start closing, you got to do all kinds of extra shit. Eric said, like, Riverdale. Nah, man, this is way better than Riverdale, man. I used to see that shit come on and turn the channel. This is actually cool, man. Now, I ain't gonna lie, three episodes was enough for me in one day. I ain't gonna lie, though. I did think that they were calling her Drew. They were saying, Dre, I ain't had the captions on, so I don't know no names like that unless I heard it. Oh, her name is Erica. That's who it was. Erica was in here hating. So she's like, I got her. She take her to the bathroom. I ain't never seen no bathroom with the camera inside the bathroom. Y'all seen this? Y'all been somewhere like this before? Oh, you said you was trolling. I was going to say, nah, it ain't no Riverdale. That Riverdale shit, I seen, like, when it used to come on, I seen maybe, like, an episode or two. I was like, what is this shit? It was just on in my mama's house. Came over, they were cooking, it was on TV. I was like, what? what is this? She said, oh, boy, we don't know. We just had a TV on. But they in the bathroom and they talking because she was supposed to be here on time. She was covering. Now, Marissa ain't told Erica that, but. Wait a minute. I'm doing some research over here. Give me give me a second. Wait a minute. You know, I, I haven't did any research on this, but hey, I ain't no Dre. I thought this, I thought she was young. I thought she was like 24, 25 years old. I ain't no, hey, she's doing a hell of a job. Did y'all know who Do, uh, Dominique Fishback was? Ain't that her name, Fishback? Yeah, Dominique Fishback. I ain't know she was 32. Judas and the Black Messiah. Damn, she was in that? Man, I don't remember, man. Well, She's been in the game for a minute. All right, that's what's up. Hey, let's get focused. All right, sir. 
It is what it is, man. They say her name is Dre. I thought they were calling her Drew. I know I heard them call her Drew one time, for sure, for sure. Fred Hampton's wife and Judas. Oh, I got to go back and watch it then. All right, cool. She got a new fan then. I think she did a good job in this show. But while they out here, they talking about they got a new party that they about to go to. It's a party. We about to kick it. One thing y'all know about Mo Channel, when there's a party, we going to go to that party. We going to go to that party. But we not talking about me going to that party. We talking about young Mo going to that party. About what they like. We said they like 21. This is 23-year-old Mo going to these parties. 23-year-old Mo going to these parties. But they talk about, hey, we going to this party. We about to kick it. They said, bring on your cute friends. Erica touched her gay friend. <laughs> motherfucking, motherfucking uh, Dre talk about, can I go? They said, cute friends, nigga. I'm like, damn, how they do Dre like that? Dre over here eating that motherfucking Chinese food like it ain't no tomorrow. Oh, yeah, Kendall. I mean, not Kendall, but Nigga. I was trying to get the one where she, like, she put the first scoop in there, but I couldn't get it, man. I was too slow. But she in here eating, talking about, yeah, I want to go to the party. Hey, be real. Y'all going to take her? Like, if she eating like this and y'all talking about going to the party, ladies, are you taking your girl with you? Are you taking your sister with you? So they say her name is Dre, but I heard them call her Drew one time. For sure, I heard her call him Drew. I'm going to go back and record it. Because I, I for sure heard them call her Drew. That's why I named her. I mean, I put the, the poll up. But, Dre, Drew, we don't care. We know we talking about the same crazy motherfucker that want to go to this party. But are y'all taking her with y'all? You taking Dre, the Chinese eater, the Chinese food eater that don't give a damn, that don't close her mouth in between. Shout out to the Chinese food. But the only way you eat like that is when that food too hot. <laughs> yeah, you're trying, to, you're trying to breathe in that air a little bit to cool off. <laughs> yeah, that Chinese food busting today. Put a little bit of hot sauce on there. We don't know what she doing, man. She eat any food except for healthy food. But y'all ain't answered. Are y'all taking her with you? I know if one of my homeboys ate like that, man, I, I, don't, I wouldn't mind bringing them, but, man, we ain't going nowhere where we got to eat out in public. People look at it over like, hey, what's wrong with your man? I'm like, man, that nigga just be eating like that, dog. That nigga go different. Kendall, why you wouldn't take her? Because of how she's eating? Come on, man. You can't do her like that. They got piece of lunch specials. So how many of these motherfuckers work at this goddamn shop? All four of them work here? Like, it don't take four people to work at no damn t-shirt shop. But I say the way that they live in is ridiculous. And then y'all boy shows up, Khalid. He told me, hey, man, come help me. I said, man, what kind of fragrance she likes to wear? She said, well, she likes purple. <laughs> what kind of help is that going to do, y'all? If I ask you what kind of perfume you like so I can go buy you some perfume, preferably one that you like, and you tell me I like purple. That's not helping me. I don't I don't know what purple is. Do I gotta go up there? Is is it purple the the the, the fragrance? Like 
So I got to go up there. Hey, let me get that purple. And they just know bring more the purple. Great, maybe. I mean, I don't know, but she came in here. She wasn't really worried about nothing. That being on the cell phone all the time. But this dude was weird anyway. I, don't, I, I, I honestly don't know what. Like he thought he was, he was gonna get a chance. Like this is what he was gonna do. Come over here, try to buy Marissa a gift for her birthday, and he's gonna game her down. So he talking to her, talking about whenever you ready to lose it, man, just let me know, man. Cause I seen how you was looking at me. It's like, all right, bro. All right, bro. You got to chill, nigga. You wild it out. Like, if you just work there, you looking like, hey, man, you wild it out, bro. You got to chill out in here, man. You got all this Houston Rocket gear on like you really rep the H, nigga. You doing too much, nigga. You dress like that out of town. You don't wear that in the H. You wear that out of town. You let people on the outside know that you from the age. We know you from the age. We know that you're a little creepy right now. So he's trying to get a little closer. I'm like, man, what the fuck is this nigga doing? What up, Tamika? Well, she leaves and she has this awkward ass walk. She walking like this, like a penguin. And when she gets back, you got Eric. You got Mo, you got OT, all of us. We done went over there. Y'all remember them shirts I told y'all we needed made? You remember them shirts I told you we needed made? The hand booty shirts, the Mo travel shirts, the friend zone shirt. You remember all them shirts we had made? Well, guess what? They made them. And when she dipped out, we came back and took them. We came back and took them. Now, every single t shirt that we say is pure profit, baby. Pure profit. She come back. They hopped out there. They tagged it up. Like, nigga, it is what it is, nigga. They took all the shirts that we asked to get made. See, we weren't there. They did it for us. You think we, you think me, OT, Eric, about to leave fingerprints around here at the crime scene? Hell no. Nah. We better have some knuckleheads do it for us. Uh, yeah, told them to tag it up real good. Let them know that Mo been here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What up, Candace? Yeah, we just got to it today, one and two. We're gonna do episode three and four, maybe, maybe tomorrow during the, maybe tomorrow in the evening. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We're gonna we're gonna finish the season by this time next week or mid next week. We'll have it finished. But it'll just be live shows for it. Oh, I do need my Ziggy shirt too. Nah, but see, I can't get the Ziggy shirts because I don't want him being in, uh, involved in my criminal in enterprise. You know what I'm saying? We got to fall back on that one. You know what I mean? I can't put my boy Ziggy in there. He the plug. Well, a lady was asking for some customer service after people that ran off with it. She had to call Marissa to pick her up. Now, Marissa's looking at Erica. Erica's looking back at Marissa. Marissa's looking at Erica. Marissa finishes that cigarette. Wait, Erica finishes the cigarette. Marissa's in the car. She's looking at Erica. Erica finishes the cigarette. She is upset because Marissa let Dre close, and Dre wasn't supposed to close. And Dre got robbed of everything, courtesy of Moe's goons. Now, right after this, they go back to the house, and she is upset. She says, you know what? Me and Khalid, we are going to Atlanta for my birthday. And when we get back, I'm moving in with them. I said, damn. You can't do that. You can't do that. What y'all was thinking? She said, I'm going to go to ATL. And when I come back, I'm moving in with him. I'm done with this shit. I can't afford this shit no more. Even though she was stealing from the corner store. She stole, she stole corn dogs. $5 worth of corn dogs in 2006. That's like three corn dogs.
She's like, hey, man, hey, hey, I got a, I got Niger ticket. Come on, come on, stay, please, please, please. She said, Niger tickets? You don't even have no money. And then I started thinking, damn. Everybody was saying Mo was pocket watching at the beginning of the episode. I ain't hear nobody say that Marissa's pocket watching. But how Marissa knows she broke? Is she pocket watching or she just knew? You see what I'm saying? We apply the rules to everybody. Y'all gonna give me them rules? I want them applied to the characters. I want everybody right now to say Marissa's a pocket watcher. Because she said that how you get them tickets, you broke. We all pocket watch. It's just I do it in 4K. We all pocket watch. I just do it in 4K. Well, it's 1080 right now. StreamYard ain't let me do 4K. But we all pocket watch. I just do mine in 1080. In front of a live audience. <laughs> Even though y'all ain't live, we gonna call it a live audience. So they didn't pay the rent. They laid on it. They got tickets. They didn't pay the corner store. They bought food. See, the reason they bought that food is because those tickets, it ain't hit the account yet. You know what I mean? Say if you got, that's $4,000. Say if you got $4,000 in your account. If you spend $4,000, if you go buy something else before that $4,000 is actually withdrawn, you can do that. <laughs> So that uh that chicken, that Frenchie's chicken. Nigga, we in debt for that shit. James says she gotta pay the rent. Hey man. Yeah, you do gotta pay the rent, but fuck that rent. Why pay the rent? Hey, James, you weren't in here when we first started the episode. Why pay the rent today? You only live once, right? That's what we said. We all came to an agreement, right? We all agreed that you only live once. So this month, we spent $1,800 just recklessly. Everybody. Everybody join in. I want all y'all to tell me what y'all spent. And then I, after I hear what y'all spent, y'all $1,800, I'm going to think about spending my $1,800. Like, let me know what y'all spent y'all $1,800 on. And then if if it sounds like it was a good idea, I'm going to spend $1,800. i am going to wait till y'all do it first. And then y'all come back and let me know if it was worth it or not. <laughs> y'all go spend y'all $1,800. Let me know, like, hey, Mo, was it worth it? You know what I'm saying? Because I'm probably going to change my mind anyway, and I'm not going to do it. But, hey. You know what I'm saying? But, hey. Hey, man, don't go spend that $1,800. Dog, she spent $3,600 just off the tickets without taxes. So we just rounding up to $4,000. The rent here can't be, in 2016, this rent for this two-bedroom house can't be no more than like $800. 2016, this house is probably like $800 the most. This motherfucker spent $4,000 this morning and bought some chicken. Plus, she had to spend $5 or do whatever the fuck she had to do to get up out the damn corner store. So $4,000, let's just say $4,000 is 2016, so a bucket of chicken for a family meal. You could probably get it for like $20. So she spent $4,020 in one day. Now they ain't got rent, and Marissa talking about, I'm going to move in with that nigga Khalid. $4,000? That's more than what I pay out here. I pay like $33 a month after everything, like rent, fucking water, electricity. I'd pay like maybe, yeah, probably like $33, $34 maybe. She spent $4,000. And I'm moving out here with my lease is over with. You think I'm about to keep paying $33 a month? Nigga, please. I'm gonna get the fuck out of here and cut this shit in half. I'm moving back to Arizona, if anything. Once the lease is up here, California has been good, but nigga, it's too expensive. I made it through the pandemic. I ain't had to spend bread like that, but nigga, I, I can't be dropping that kind of bread no more, bro. YouTube numbers ain't right no more. You know what I mean? I gotta shake back. I got a custom expense. Fuck $4,000. $4,000, nigga, that's about to be three months of rent.
And for the record, well, Bianca, I lived in Arizona from 2017 to 2020. I mean, of course, like the spot that I was in before I moved out here, we was paying 1100 a month. I moved out here. I started paying 20. When I moved in here, it was 28. Now it's up to like 31. So after three years, it went up about $300. It's about like 3100 Well, I pay like 34 a month. Yeah, in, uh, internet, water. It's probably like 34 a month. But yeah, I'll go back to Arizona and I'll spend like 2000 a month. But come on, man. Another 1400 a month on top of it, man. I can't do that shit. But man, y'all know me, man. I'm about cutting expenses. I live a modest lifestyle anyway, man. I get on here. I can chill all night. The longer I'm on here with y'all, the less money I got to spend out there with them. You know what I mean? But she's moving out, and we're thinking Khalid has his own spot. We thinking Khalid, she about to go in there, they about to power a couple. But she's like, why are you doing this to me? And he tried to have sex with me earlier. Now, when Marissa hears this, she's like, why do you always do that? Every guy I bring over, you want to, you just want to step in and get involved. She said, no, I'm telling you, man, ain't shit. He ain't no good for you. Neither were they. So they going at it because she think that she's just trying to steal a man. But in reality, she's actually looking out for her. But in reality, Marissa is really the bad one here. Marissa stealing shit. She got this nigga up in the house. They don't really know this nigga. That's just what Dre is telling us. We know this nigga for maybe a month, if that. But she talking about she going to move in. She going to go to the A with this nigga. And she trying to stop her. But she don't give a fuck. She hops out in the whip and drives off. One thing you ain't going to do is stop true love. I don't know how they living like this, but Dina girl is right. They both fucked up. It's just one more fucked up than the other. We all like Dre, but Dre is cray. Cray, cray, that is. And everybody's like, wait a minute. Fuck what you got going on in life. Listen, if you're down and out right now, fuck it. You ain't got rent next month. Fuck it. Your roommate moving out on you. Fuck it. Your roommate's boyfriend tried to get at you. Fuck it. You had to pay $5 to get up out the corner store. Fuck it. You bought Frenchies and you ain't had no money. Fuck it. Festival. It's dropped. Nyjah is queen. They said, did Cache seriously cheat on Nyjah? Right before a festival dropped? Right before festival dropped? Then Marissa said, girl, she wrote this shit from my heart. So Marissa then drove off. She's saying this shit came from her heart. That's how she feeling right now. Where are you, Dre? Pick up. And we looking at it like, damn, Marissa then dipped out, but now she's texting. But guess what? Dre don't give a fuck. Dre on the block. Dre in H Town. Dre got the hair did, got the makeup on, got the dress. Big wheels keep on turning. Yeah. Oh. Rolling. Rolling on the river. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, she done pulled up because we stepping out tonight. Festival done dropped and she come in here and get a white boy right off the bat. You white boy. She go over there. Now, this is an ideal situation, gentlemen, but I always tell you, be prepared because you got to know your game level. And for an attractive woman to just come up to you and get to talking, that's like a a, a one out of ten chance. It's not going to happen too often. So you got to be prepared for it. And then she came over and said, hey, won't you come and dance with me? Now, I ain't the best dancer, but shit. I could follow some rules. She, she looked good. She came in here straight to me. But of course, I'm thinking, who is she in here with? First thing I'm thinking is she trying to make a nigga jealous. So I got to let my dogs know, hey, watch out, man. Because if a nigga come out here, I'm going to hit this nigga with this glass that I got. You got to let your crew know like what's going to go on in these kind of situations. Now, I don't go to those type of environments anymore. That's just when I was younger. Because back then, we used to, yeah, yeah, on the wall. She on you twerking and shit. But that's different. 
But she's like, I want you to come and dance with me. So she take him out on the floor. Look, this dude back here. He too happy his homeboy on something. Look at him. He's like, damn, is that Jonah? Is Jonah over there doing that? What was his name? Jonah? Whatever his name is, he in here. And she backing that thing up on him. Now, this is my type of night right here. You know what I'm saying? You pull up, you enjoy your night. Have a little fun, you know what I mean? And then she wakes up at our dog's house. Now, when she wake up, she looking like, man, what the hell is going on here? I said, all right, got the little setup, H-Town, got the bikes on the ceiling. I seen a bike rack that goes on the ceiling, but I was like, man, I don't want my bike on the ceiling, though. So that's why y'all see my bike rack on, outside my door. But she over here, and I'm like, man, what's he living in, a studio apartment? He got some strawberries, and you know, it all caught us off guard, man. We caught meat on the bowl, pause, man. I said, man, what the fuck? He hopping in the bed talking about, hey, you want some of these strawberries? She was like, oh, what about last night? He was like, man, it was crazy. Y'all think she gave him some love or they just cuddled? You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with cuddling, you know what I mean? Ain't nothing wrong with cuddling. Show up, we cuddle a little bit. We do little Eskimo kisses, like nose to nose, you know what I mean? We do a little bit of that. I ain't gonna lie, that scene caught me off guard. So, fellas, if you haven't watched the show, you know, I took one for the team. Pause. It is what it is. It traumatized. And it just caught me off guard. Like, so I was watching on the couch. I looked out like, come on, man. I ain't seen... I ain't see one person online tell me nothing about that. All we seen all week was, oh, Chloe did this. Chloe did that. Uh, y'all niggas need to give us the heads up. Y'all need to give us the heads up. Ain't no one say nothing about this going to be meeting episode one. I said, come on, man. Pause. I'm on the couch chilling. I'm like, man, what is this? Come on, man. But it is what it is, man. That's one thing. What I tell y'all, though, what have I been telling y'all? Where does Bo feel most comfortable at? At my crib. At my crib. And at my crib, if the meat on the bowl, then my meat on the bowl is my bowl. It's my meat. They go together. My buddy. But that's why you stay at your house. That's just how you live. You comfortable. Sometimes it's like a Hanes commercial for me. Sometimes I might go take a shower, hop about the shower, go get me some food. I just be in the bed, watch a TV show, just my draws, eating. You know what I mean? I might have some Pringles. I might have some uh, Lifesaver gummies. You never know with me. I'm chilling. This is my spot. If I want to walk around my spot with my ass out, my motherfucking Johnson out, my motherfucking bowl of strawberries, this is my house. When I walk around the house naked and I'm getting right after I had a long day in the gym, I'm drinking Simply Spike Lemonade, strawberry. It gets me through the evening. Yeah. I'm at my house. I'm at my house. I'm drinking the Simply Spike Strawberry Lemonade. Contains 5% alcohol and 5% juice. Drink responsibly, 21 and older. I'm at my house. Meat on bowl is good. Hey, I got meat on bowl. It's my bowl. If you don't want strawberries out my bowl, then don't eat the strawberries out my bowl. But that's the difference. I'm at my house. I'm at my crib. When I go to your crib, you do what you want to do at your crib. That's your crib. But you in my bed with my shirt on. Yeah, if I want to bring a bowl over here. Now, I don't know why meat was on the bowl. I don't know why you would have your meat out near the bowl, but it's your house. Whatever you do in your weird shit, 
You can do that. Now, I'm not putting meat on the bowl. I'm just saying if it happened, you got to accept it because it's my meat on my bowl. But I'm not doing it. I'm not really trying to have my meat out around food anyway. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Now, you know, you'll hear people, oh, man, it's your game, man. It's this. Like, nigga, it's a fucking TV show. It caught us off guard, nigga. Keep it moving, nigga. Fucking TV show. The nigga had meat on his bowl. What are we forgetting here, y'all? What are we forgetting? We doing all this shit talking. We talking about meat on bowls, strawberries. What are we forgetting? Someone t please tell me, what are, what are we forgetting? Someone tell me what are we forgetting right now about this whole scenario? I'm gonna grab me another Simply Spike lemonade. You know, I'm about to stop giving them that free promo. Matter of fact, I'm gonna make a post this week, uh, probably by Monday, and I'm gonna bring it up on Instagram, man. And we're gonna need everybody to tag Simply, man. We about to get us a deal with Simply, dog. I need five thousand dollars. I don't even ask for much. Five thousand dollars a month, sixty thousand for the year, and you got to send me a case, two cases each week. That's all I ask for. They ain't even that much. $60,000 contract, uh, two boxes a week. That's all I need. I don't need much in life. You know what I'm saying? I don't need much in life. Look, y'all, yeah, 5000 would be my minimum. Y'all got, y'all can do 5000 Come on now. Just like Simply can do $5,000, make sure y'all hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. We're going to continue. We still got episode two. We're a little bit over halfway here. Um. Uh, we need a shirt made. Meet on bowls. <laughs> Meet on bowls. But hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. I'll be right back. Give me another drink. The show's pretty interesting. So if you haven't watched it, definitely catch up on it because we're talking about one and two tonight. Probably do three and four. We might be able to squeeze three and four into tomorrow night. I'll ask you guys what you want to do after we get done with this. But hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button, y'all. No, I can see y'all, right? Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, support the channel, cash app at the bottom of the screen. M O E D O T J. We be right back.
You can run, but you can't hide. You can run, but you can't hide. Hey, I'm going to rap over this one day. Give me a minute. I'm going to rap over this, man. Let's go ahead and jump back into it. We ain't got to no killer yet. She in the bathroom. She got to take a boo-boo because ain't nothing like me on the bowl in the morning and you got to boo-boo. Now, she got to go in here and charge up the phone. Now, Marissa been sending off messages. 8.27 in the morning, 10% left. Pick up. Fuck, he left me stranded. Pick up. Pick up. He left me stranded. We broke up. He's fucking trash. I just do up. Girl, she wrote this from. Wait, girl, she wrote this shit from my heart. This bitch is a queen who, who the fuck would ever cheat on her? What the fuck is wrong? Why do I always get with these kind of dudes? Man, fuck these niggas. I'm reading the chat like, damn, you're going crazy. What y'all doing in this situation if your homegirl hitting you up at at all times of the night and it's 827 in the morning, you just not getting these messages? What y'all doing? Y'all riding? Y'all sliding for homegirl or y'all chilling? Remember this text message. All right, bet. So I'm kind of confused on the show, though. So is she texting herself or y'all not going to give me that information? I got to wait and see. I mean, I, I like because some of the messages. I don't know, man, the show, the show was good because it has me confused just off of the episodes that I watched. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. We're going to continue. But Kendall said we need to remember this text message. No spoilers. Hey, man. Y'all can't spoil it. Well, y'all spoil it for each other. You said you can't spoil me, man. I wanna, I'm still going to watch and try to figure it out. But you know I'm invested. And you know I got all the screenshots of every message. I got all of them. Nothing gets by us here. All right. What the fuck is wrong with me? Why do I always get like this with dudes, man? Fuck these niggas. Man, fuck them niggas. Girl, I'm so fucked up right now. She said, you were right. I'll never doubt you again. He did fart when we fucked. Am I reading that correctly? You were right. I'll never doubt you again. He did fart when we fucked. What kind of freaky shit they got going on? Are you telling your homegirl that? that man, I, w- I wish I would see a text message. The girl talking about, yeah, me and Mo was together. That nigga farted. I was one of the was one of like that or one of the little the little silent ones he tried to sneak out of there talking about was it one of them you know what I'm saying what, what was it <laughs> this nigga talking about he farted what yeah hey no nah, there ain't no meat farting and that, that they said that <laughs> they said that butt was playing the trumpet that butt trumpet <laughs> Yeah, they said that motherfucker was yeah that's what 21 Savage said turn him into a booty clapper that's what they said he was doing and that booty went clap like what pause nigga you can't be farting in there that nigga was hitting his doggy the other day we found out that this nigga be farting when he fucking yeah you exposed now man they said that you be farting when you in them guts nigga you a nasty nigga You a nasty nigga. You know, hey, we didn't all been there before. Y'all about to lie? Y'all about to lie? 
We done all been there. You let one of them little silent ones out. You trying to you trying to keep it in because you don't want that motherfucker to be like, and you're like oh, well. yeah, we done all been there before. Look at y'all. He said he did fart when we were at it, so it wasn't her. It was this nigga farting. Wait a minute. So did Dre text her and be like, hey man, that nigga was farting when he was in there the other day? What the fuck? This this message is from Marissa, ain't it? Marissa, I'm fucked up. What is wrong when I get with dudes? What is wrong with me? I always get like this with dudes. Man, fuck these niggas. I'm fucked up. I think I seen somebody answer this exactly how I, I, I needed to answer it. It is what it is, says she ain't leave though. So the whole time she knew he I mean, let's think about it. Man, it's just a fart. We all humans. We all toot sometimes. Tooted and booted. Yeah, I tooted and booted. Eh? Now you never number two at somebody's house the first time you're going over there. You try not to number two at a woman's house at all. You just try to have a man. If you can tough it out, make it back to the crib, bro. <laughs> You sitting in there, you got your drawers down, you in there holding on to the seat, like, no, nigga, go home, bro. Go home, man. But she did stay. Wait, did we skip some scenes? Oh, she was over at old boy's house. He was asking if she from Houston. She gets back to the crib. We're like, all right. They about to kick it. They about to kick it. You know, they're going to laugh. They're going to go over the messages. Girl, what you mean he farted? How'd you know? How'd you know I was telling the truth? So how do you explain this? What do you think the the explanation of how he was tooting? How did she find out he was farting last night or he admitted it? Like, that's something you're never going to admit to. Hey, did you fart when we were having sex? You think I'm about to tell a woman that I'm messing with her? Did you fart? I'm like, I'm not. I didn't. Did you? Did you fart or something? Why would I fart? Yo, I'm denying that. If a woman ever asked me that, hey, but did you fart with her? I'm like, no. Did you? I thought that was you. I ain't gonna lie. I thought that was you. I ain't saying nothing. I don't know what happened in that motherfucker. All I know is I ain't fart. I ain't do it. It wasn't me. Kendall said, I don't do social media no more. Now you got to get back out here, man. You got to live a good life. Got to live a good life. But when she shows up, I'm like, all right, she looking kind of good. She just came from the white boy house. And Marissa, I don't know what she's doing. I don't know if she's she's faking sleep or what, but she's non-responsive. Eyes are still open. We take it to the hospital and it looks like, man, that might be the end of it. She in here waiting. You know they ain't got no insurance. They know for damn sure they ain't got no insurance. If you ain't got no insurance, you know who they calling for you? Who are they calling for you if you ain't got no insurance, y'all? Yeah, can I, I'm not saying life ain't great, Kendall. You know me, man. Look, I got social media, man. I ain't posted a picture in a, like a couple of months, man. I probably won't post one until maybe the summer or something. It might be a picture from last summer. We don't even know with me. Candace said, you got to deny it till marriage. No, nah, I mean, you got to deny that forever. But if you don't have any health insurance or anything, believe me, when you go into these hospitals, they're going to call Alvin up. Yeah, I'm talking about Lamar's cousin, Alvin. They're going to get Alvin to come get your ass about the hospital, take your ass back over to wherever he at. But you ain't going to be sitting in this hospital with no damn insurance. Now, she's sitting in the room. She's missing her. That's all she's thinking about, man. We love Nyjah. 
Then she goes downstairs and she's sleeping on the couch and the movers are like, man, you need to get your ass up because they are getting evicted. Now, she does have two tickets. She does have $4,000 worth of tickets to this damn Nyjah concert. $4,000 worth. If you spent that kind of money, that means you can make it easy six dollars or $7,000 off of it resale. She needs to be putting those tickets back up to sale and getting up off her ass. Because right now, we just flipping those tickets for a profit. Because the movers, they don't care. When you are evicted, you are evicted. There ain't no talking to me. I ain't got nothing to do with what you and your landlord and the bank got going on. Get your ass up off this couch because we taking it and you need to go. So she's sitting here and she's going through it. Then she goes to the store, man. Y'all remember Little Doughboy? Little Doughboy and Little Chris, they went to the corner store. They ain't had no money. That's what she just did. She dropped a Coca-Cola bottle. You got to drink Pepsi. You got to drink Pepsi. Coca-Cola is the flat version of Pepsi. Unless Coca-Cola want to pay me, and I can say otherwise, Pepsi is better. She picks up a piece of glass, and I was thinking she's about to cut her wrist like her sister. But instead, she just squeezes it in the palm of her hand and blood drips all over the floor. Clean up on L4. Now she's looking at Erica's, um, what, aesthetics? R.I.P. Everybody's showing her love. Baby girl. R.I.P., y'all. Shirley said, I just watched uh, the first two episodes. Yeah, this show is crazy. And we ain't even got to the crazy part yet. It's just heating up and we two hours in. You see how you can stretch a 30-minute show and make it interesting? Man, let me get in on there. But then she looks over and what does she find? She finds Marissa's cell phone. Now, Marissa's cell phone has been at the house charging up. And we're looking at the messages. Please come home. Where are you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love you. She texts back. I miss you. And that's the last message. Where well, the last message she got was, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love you. And the last message she sent her moving forward is, I miss you. And I miss you too. Is she texting herself the rest of the season or is somebody texting her? That's why I'm confused at. Because she just texted herself. Or, or, so are they showing us that she's texting herself throughout this and she's telling herself to do stupid shit? You know what I mean? That's where I was at. When I was watching, I said, what the fuck is going on? Right, she texts herself. She has Marissa's phone. No, I mean, I. So wait. <laughs> please, please explain. Please explain. Because I'm confused. I'm not going to lie. I'm stomped right now. Y'all have to explain this to me. So the whole time was she texting herself? Or was Marissa really texting her last night talking about the nigga was farting? And then she came home to her dad. And this is when she. You know, I see, I need these. See, I'm confused. When I look at the chat, some of y'all are answering the earlier question, but then people are answering the tail end. Were those real texts from Marissa? Were those real text messages? Only after she died. Okay, so. No, nah, it ain't just simply. I, I was watching it. I wasn't drinking earlier. I've only been smoking. I, I started drinking when I got on the live. I, I only smoked today. When I smoke, y'all know I'm good as hell. We good to go. When I smoke, I might be able to save world hunger. I never know. When I'm smoking, you never know. It ain't just simply spike. So, all right. It was real messages up until now, right? So this I miss you and I miss you too is the first 
text message to herself, right? This is for the people that haven't watched it or the people that are confused. This is the first official message that she sent to herself, right? No, kid, no, I, I, I'm going to watch it, but I'm staying up to right now. I just want to make sure that I'm good. Make sure that I ain't tripping. There was real messages. This nigga farted while he was knocking it off. She told her to come home. And then right now is when she found the phone. All right. All right. Cool. Because you know, if I watch another episode, we got to come back to these screenshots and look at these messages and we will do it. But then it's the funeral. She come in here. I'm like, damn, she crying and shit. She's an attractive woman. I just wouldn't holler at her today, man. She down and out, man. She lost her sister. I got to give her at least a day or two to recover. Maybe like two days after the death of her, then you can shoot your shot. But right now, you can't shoot your shot. But she comes in and she's looking. And this big ass dude back here, we're going to call him Bug Knight. He ain't Suge Knight. He Bug Knight. But he come up and he talk about the family said, you need to get the fuck up out of here. She's like, I'm family. They said, no, the real family wants you to fuck out of here. So I'm thinking, wait, they said that they were sisters, so they must not be real sisters. I know, I think it was Neek that said they brought her in. So they're not real sisters. Because if they were real sisters, why would she get kicked out when she didn't do nothing? But then this start made me think, all right, if the family kicked her out, she had to do something in the past. Because you're not just kicking somebody out. I remember when uh, Whitney Houston passed, they were tripping on bringing uh, Bobby uh, Brown coming in there. They were tripping on Bobby Brown coming. I said, that's fucked up, man. Bobby Brown ain't did nothing to nobody. Angel said she didn't wear black to the front. She ain't got no money. She couldn't afford a black dress. And we were, Hey, remember she spent $4,020? Episode five and six, we'll find out. See, they definitely should have dropped all this. Like, they shouldn't have dropped it at one time, man. They should have let us wonder for a week because this has me confused. All right. So we got the text messages. Real messages up until I miss you. Now we're finding out that they might not be real sisters at this point. Because she says she's family. Boo Knight came. Boo Knight got her up out of here. And then she goes outside. And right here and there, no, hey, no disrespect, Dre. You good in my book. But I said, this motherfucker weird. She go outside and it's a whole goddamn swarm of bees. Have y'all ever seen this in real life? Have y'all ever had a, a swarm of bees in your front yard? We did in the tree one time. We had to call the pest control to come and get it. I mean, they brought out like three trucks. It was a big ass hive like this. And they had to cut it down. They had to get the queen. They put the queen, uh, the queen in this little container thing. And then all the other bees, they I mean, they they captured most of them, but the rest of them just followed. They probably died, but I remember seeing that in real life. But I said, man, I wasn't this fascinated. When I seen a beehive, a swarm of bees, I was in the house. I'm like, nigga, I ain't getting stung. I went all my life up until the age of 24 before I ever got stung. I got stung by a wasp in front of my arm right here. I was picking up a pallet in Spokane, Washington. We was on the reservation up there. I was picking up a pallet to put boxes on, went back there, chilling and shit, had my music on. I was listening to T.I., his King album. And my favorite song was on there was, uh, Damn, what was it? Got my foe and my Chevy on 20 foes. And I know which way am I going to go. Got my foe, foe. Yeah, Young Dro was on there. I was listening to that because that's when ATL came out. And with me, uh, we, uh, one, of, one of my co-workers, we went to see ATL when we was in Arizona, but we was up in uh, Spokane at that point. You know what I'm saying? I'm Shout out to her, you know what I'm saying? Won't mention her name. She married with kids now, so you know. But yeah, man. 
I got stung by a goddamn wasp up under my fucking arm, man. That was probably the worst. I said, damn. Shit. I dropped that motherfucking pallet so quick. I was up there with my dog, Abdul. The guy I told y'all they had the eye that was messed up. Who was up there? That nigga was laughing. I was like, nigga, this shit ain't funny, nigga. I ain't know if I was allergic to hornets or nothing or wasps. I ain't know nothing. All I know is I was stung. And, man, when I tell you up under my arm was hurting, that shit, like, went from, like, right here up into my, my armpit. I'm like, God damn, what the fuck, nigga? I'm over here telling the boss, like, hey, nigga, I can't move nothing else. My motherfucking arm is numb, dog. I was tripping like hell. But I tell you one thing, I killed that motherfucking wasp, though. That motherfucking wasp got his, hey, he got his lick. I killed that motherfucker for real. I had my gloves on. I smashed that motherfucker against the wall. Fuck all that. Me and my brother used to catch honeybees. We'd take a jar, put them on top of it, catch them, put it in there, and then put some ants in there and see if they'll fight each other. But when she came out here and she started looking at this, I said, man, this girl weird. And then she shows up at Khalid's house. He lets her in. They get to talking. <laughs> we ended on a fight. And... <laughs> you just don't want it to end that way. No, all I wanted was love. I know I should have came to the funeral, but I couldn't, man. I couldn't bear to look at her. She was like, yeah, you should have came. Did you guys think he was genuine? When he's in here crying, are you thinking he's for real about it? She like rubbing on his knees. She rubbing on his back. He crying and shit. I'm like, man... One thing I know about Franklin, this nigga don't care about nobody. Angel said, I thought he was laughing. At exactly. That's why I said, do y'all think he was genuine? Because at first it sounded like he was laughing. But then he started crying. She rubbed his knee and rubbed his back. He was like, oh. And then I'm thinking he about to go for a kiss. I'm like, nigga, what are you doing? But he's like, you want some tea? My mama make tea. I'm trying to think. Well, I've only had one woman that I was involved with that ended up passing. I ain't gonna lie, I cried. I ain't gonna lie, I cried when I found out she passed. It was after basic training. I was in tech school. And I just went on Facebook one day after we got done doing our workouts. People were saying RIP to her. She lost control of her car one night. Like her last message was talking about her daughter too. I said, damn, that's messed up. She lost control of her car. Went off into the, to like a ditch on the side of the road. Totaled the car and she passed. Now, he didn't hit me that first day. That was probably like a Wednesday or a Thursday when I seen that message on Facebook where everybody was saying R.I.P. to her. It probably wasn't until like Sunday. I cried. I ain't going to lie to you. I cried. It wasn't like a... Yeah, but a tear dropped out of my eye. Like, damn, that's fucked up. She was always good people, too. But he breaks down and Yeah, whenever I go back to Kansas City, on the side of the road where she passed on one of the signs, they got they got the little heart and stuff. I'm like, damn, that shit sucks, man. Man, don't text and drive, man. You'll never see me texting and driving. Don't drink and drive. That shit ain't worth it, bro. Now, I'm not saying that's what she did, but somehow she lost control of her car. But I wasn't crying like this guy. But I guess that was his bae. We were just talking. We were just messing around. But He in the kitchen talking about My mama said, this is better than some church chicken. He about to make some tea. He said, you want some tea? She said, yeah, I'll take some tea. He said, all right, I'll go make some tea. But if you look in the back closely, you 
You see her go over there and grab something. I'm like, man, what the hell is going on here? It seemed like he was being cool. He was chilling. Then she hit this nigga in the back of the head and it was over with. I said, oh, what the fuck are we watching? Bow! She hit this nigga in the back of the head. You see how slow his body dropped to the floor? I'm talking about... Oh, he hit the floor. I'm like, all right, she just knocked this nigga out. I'm not expecting this show to be as wild as it's about to be. So she knocks this nigga out. He was in here talking about tea. That was the last thing he said. Oh, man, I got some tea. Knock the fuck out. Now, in my head, the first thing I'm thinking is, one, I would have never turned my back. I would have been in the kitchen cooking so I could see what she owned because I already knew that she was weird. The whole time I've known her, she always seemed weird. She was watching me while I was smashing her sister. I got to watch her. Whenever I'm doing anything now, because that motherfucker just sat there and watched, but he wasn't paying attention. He get hit in the back of the head, and the first thing I was thinking was, would I be able to take a vase to the back of the head? And I was thinking, if I was prepared, yes. Like, if I heard somebody coming up and they tried to hit me, like I'm trying to run away, all right, cool, I could take a hit to the back of the head. But if I'm just there chilling, relaxed, making some tea, and a nigga hit me in the back of the head, bow! I'm like, oh, shit. So he's stunned right now. This caught him off guard. And I know everybody was thinking, like, damn, she knocked him out. And you could tell he was off guard because he couldn't even roll over on his own to try to get up. So right now he's stunned. It's over with. There's no coming back. It's one count, two Three, it's over with. The ref would throw in the towel right now because he hit the ground after he got hit in the head. Then she rolled this nigga over. She get on top, and y'all know, hey, y'all know how we do it over here. 45 degree angle behind the head, extend forward, full 90. You go from 45 degree to, to 90 to over. We've been over this several times when we were watching The Last of Us. She executed it perfectly here. Now I give her a nine and a half. Well, now I give her a 9.3 just for the simple fact that she dropped the weapon. She started grabbing everything. Now, if she would have just continued to do what she was supposed to do, cool. But then I said, all right, she knocked this nigga out. Here we go. This motherfucker goes into the refrigerator and starts eating the goddamn pie. She takes the sweet potato pie out the refrigerator. <laughs> She eating this shit like a fucking savage. The dog is out barking. I said, what the fuck are we watching? This motherfucker killed a nigga, went into the refrigerator and ate the sweet potato pie. I said, what the fuck is she doing? I went from, damn, she's straight to, man, I'm not fucking with Dre. Nigga, please. Look how she eating that goddamn pie. That motherfucker... Ain't nobody, man, what? She's eating that goddamn pie like a motherfucking ain't eight in years. That motherfucker. <laughs> you all right? Is everything okay? Then... With all of that going on, it hit me in my head. Marissa said she was going to get with Khalid when she get back. They were going to go to Atlanta. Then she was going to move in with him. This nigga live at his daddy house. This nigga live with his dad. His mom and dad, they separated a couple months ago. Him and his dad is here. His dad on vacation getting his groove on. How uh, Khalid's dad got his groove back. He out and about getting his groove on. She talking about she going to get back and she going to move in with this nigga. People, all I'm going to say is make the right decisions in life. These two young women did not have to be living like this. They did not have to be living like this. They chose to live this way. There's nothing you can tell me. They chose to live this way. This motherfucker spent $4,000 on tickets. They chose to live the way that they are living. Neither one of them had to be living like this, but 
this is the way it is. And let me tell you, this motherfucker Dre is on some other shit. When she killed this nigga, I'm thinking, all right, she killed him. She flipped out. But did she kill him over Marissa or did she kill him over him saying that Nyjah is just a regular person? Was it over Marissa or was it over Nyjah being called regular just like you and I? Now, we know Nyjah ain't like you and I. Nyjah, queen. Nyjah, the top dog. Nyjah ain't like Mo. You think Nyjah... You think Nyjah would choose Mo over Cache? Hell no. Nah, Mo ain't got no clout. Cache, big time. You think you think she's normal? Do you no? Someone, someone talk to me. Do any of y'all think Nyjah is normal? See, we got a lot of women in here tonight. Most fellas. Y'all probably didn't even know about this show. Man, I was telling them about this a couple weeks ago, and I'm finally watching it. This shit's actually good, man. This shit's actually good, and it's crazy because, like what I'm explaining, this motherfucker just killed a nigga, ate the pie, looked at the dog. But when we go into episode two, it's going to have you thinking about this scene and thinking, did she do it because of Nyjah? Did she do it because of Marissa? Now, people are saying Marissa to her was, like, comparable to Nyjah. So maybe she looked up to her. I'm only three episodes in, but let's go ahead and go to episode two. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Don't nobody break a show down like Mo break a show down. Now, you know, we go into all the details over here. That's what we do. That's what we do. And before we move on, I like to say RIP to Marissa. R.I.P. to Khalid. R.I.P. to everyone that didn't believe that Nyjah was queen. R.I.P. to everyone that doesn't know that Nyjah is queen. R.I.P. to those that think because we don't move the same way that you move, we weird, we different. R.I.P. to you. R.I.P. to Khalid, Mama's Tea Recipe. R.I.P. to the furniture in our old house. It's gone. Foreclosed. Evicted. It's done. It's gone. R.I.P. to the relationship with Marissa's family. They didn't want us at the funeral. R.I.P. to that check that we spent on them two tickets that we are no longer going on. There's a lot of R.I.P.s. R.I.P. to that dog that was on the porch that we'll never ever see again. Maybe, maybe we will, maybe we won't. Who knows? But R.I.P. to all of those that we lost in episode one. Episode two is here. Now we in motherfucking, what they say, Fayetteville, Tennessee? Is that what they said? Where we at in Tennessee, y'all? Fayetteville? I forgot where we at in Tennessee. I remember seeing the picture. I mean, they said at the beginning. Did I get it? No. Nah. But anyway, it don't matter. Don't matter. I got a homeboy going to Japan in a couple of months. He said, don't matter. Now, my dog is pulling up now. Hey. Lafayette. All right. I know it's in Tennessee, though. Now, what I like about my dog right here, this right here, this is a guy you can have in your crew. You need a guy like this in your crew. And the reason I'm going to tell you about this guy right here, because he's unique. You always need someone like this in the crew. Somebody that's going to be real at all times. Someone that exaggerates a little bit, but they real. They always going to hold it down for you. They ain't really going to say too much. Sometimes they might slip up, but you need people like this in the crew. And the reason for that, oh yeah, Candace, RIP to that pie, that sweet potato pie. That right there where she was eating, that was what The Rock used to talk about. That poontang pie, that was what she was eating. That, that ham booty pie, that's what she was eating. 
Wherever she was eating, it was disgusting looking. I'll tell you one thing. I guarantee if that was sweet potato, I ain't eating sweet potato no more in my life. Fayetteville. Now, I knew it was something, Tennessee, but we out there right now. And you need a nigga like this in your crew. Because what did he do? What was the first thing you seen him do? After he got out of this truck, what did he do? That's what you got to look at. Was it Cherry Pie? Franklin kept calling it. Well, he was calling her Cherry Pie, uh, Cherry Pie because she was a virgin, allegedly. We don't know what she was doing with Jonah or not. <laughs> Jonah was a munch. So we going with the name of Jonah. I just made the Jonah name. I don't think that nigga's name was Jonah. I just called him Jonah. But the first thing he did when he got out the car and why I say you need somebody like this on your team. When he hopped out, the stripper came out. He said, what's up? What you want? He go get the party started, but you see, he's not too aggressive. That's why I said you need someone like this in the crew. He gonna be energetic. He knows his boundaries. He knows who he can and can't talk to. So all he's trying to see is what's up. And she's like, I ain't fucking with you. He said, fuck it. I'm going in the club. That's what I'm saying. You need someone like that. You got to have that one homeboy that really don't care, but he knows where he is. You know what I'm saying? In the pecking order. Not saying he's less than anybody, but he know that he ain't got no game. He ain't gonna really be on nothing. But he going to have a good time. Like, we out. If we go somewhere, we going out to drink or some shit. We about to eat before we hit the town in whatever city we didn't stop them. He's who you need. He the type of nigga that's going to go, go talk to the DJ. He going to talk to, like, the managers. Well, he's not going to talk to them. The manager. He going to talk to, like, the DJs. He going to talk to, like, the security. Now, my job, I go talk to, like, the I go talk to, like, the, the managers and shit like that. I go talk to the bartenders. He know his job is just trying to have a good time. But the stripper like, nigga, I'm off the clock. But he like, fuck it, nigga. We going in the club, nigga. We going in the club. What y'all doing? Y'all going down to the pink? What we doing? We in the club tonight or y'all bullshitting? Should we go in the club or should we end the live right here on episode one? Or should we go in the club? Let me know, man. Let me know, man. I don't think we need to go in the club. I don't think we prepared for that. This ain't the pink. We ain't ready to go in the club. We're going to go ahead and end tonight's live. That was good. Um, thank y'all for tuning in. I'm Modi J. We're not going to go in the club tonight. Uh, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. We might shut it down. We ain't going in the club. We ain't going in the club. Man, the strippers, they tripping tonight, dog. I'm not trying to go in no strip club and the strippers talking about they off the clock. Y'all been telling Mo, Mo, go to the strip club. Mo, go to the strip club. Hit the strip club. I'm like, I'm going to hit the strip club. But the strippers, how she getting off? The sun just now going down. She talking about I'm off work. Now come back in. We having a party. We ain't going in the strip club, man. Look at my dog park. My boy hog in the lane. He pulled up to spend his hard-earned money. Look how he parked over the line. And she talking about now nah, I'm off the clock. We ain't going in this club, man. What is this shit called? The lure? Nah, we ain't going in here, man. I'm I'd rather go to Lickety Splits, Marty's uh Marty's strip club, man. We're not going in here. Hey man, the live is over, y'all. We're not going in this strip club. I barely go in the strip clubs. But the strippers talking my mom, we off. I'm like, damn, y'all off. I was man, I was about to spend a check on you, baby. Ungrateful. But we go in there anyway. Does anybody know my man's name? Because he Tonks boy. 
Does anybody remember his name? It's my boy from The Wire. Well, let me try to find it real quick. Oh, yeah, we got some weed now. We good, y'all. We good now. Yeah, it's poop. But anyway, he's showing up. He like, man, let me get that breakfast special. You know what I mean? That all black coffee. You know what I mean? That all black coffee. He don't want no drink. He want that coffee. Now, girls showing them love, right? And we look on the stage and we like, what they doing in the strip club? Motherfucking Dre on the motherfucking stage, y'all. Dre is on the goddamn stage. Dre is on the stage. What's Dre going by right now? Candace? Candy? Whatever she going by. You know, I don't be paying attention like that. Y'all give me her nickname. I know her by Dre. She in here. She getting it in, too. She got the bedazzle. Uh, I don't even know what kind. What, what would you call it? Is it a one piece? A one and a half piece? Because it was one all together. But then it's like separated here. You see a little bit of thigh on the inside. But, oh, Carmen. I knew it was a C. Carmen in here. She doing her thing. I'm like, man, I don't know. This is kind of. What y'all thinking, man? How much should we, you know what I'm saying? How much are we tipping for this dance that she was giving, y'all? What we what we tipping tonight, y'all? I don't really go to the strip club, but we'll be tipping tonight, y'all. We'll be tipping tonight. For this dance right here, what do you think? We gonna we're gonna throw five, ten, maybe? A little two or three piece. Now y'all know I don't be in the strip club or not. But tonight, mm. so I got two dollars for the coffee. This is two thousand sixteen, two dollars for the coffee. Put that there for this dance. We're going to do $2 for this dance. He was scared to throw the money up there. He talking about. So we $4 in right now. We just now get to the strip club. We got the, the, the breakfast. We got the coffee black. So we got the, the $2 for the coffee. Oh, we got to pay for breakfast. Prepare, uh, all right, we got $2 for coffee. We got $2 to throw on the stage. We're going to do for the breakfast meal, two for the coffee. One, two, three, four. The three ninety nine dollars breakfast. So we got two, four, five, six, seven, eight dollars. All right, we had $10. We got us a meal. We got us a meal. We got some coffee, and we got $2 to keep her entertained on the stage. So we good right now, y'all. We good right now. All right, we got ten dollars out the way, so we got us a little budget. Candace talking about fifty, fifty dollars. No, we had ten dollars right now. We gonna make it through this night with ten dollars. We might spend a little bit more, but you know we got a budget. Now he up here throwing dollars. She said, "Where your friend daddy?" He said, "My friend, a friend." She said, "Yeah, the guy that wear that Titan hat." He said, "Oh, you talking about Tonk?" Man, his ass up in Philly. He had to make a run. I don't know. I don't keep track of that, nigga. I don't keep track of that. Hey, now I'm in the club. I'm balling now. She talking to me, talking about where Tonk at. Hey, what am I doing? Man, I don't keep track of that, nigga. I'm a high boy. I don't keep. I'm flat. I'm on flames that money. Let her know, like, hey, get on your J-O. I don't know where that nigga at. I got me some ones in the hand. She's like, yeah, Tonk. He said, man, that nigga in Philly. But let me tell you something. He ain't the only nigga in the city getting money. I didn't already drop 10 in this motherfucker that night. 
We already 10 deep. I'm telling you, I'm a nigga that getting money too. I can take care of you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Here go another 10. You get the dance. Here go another 10. I ain't going to bullshit you. I ain't going to bullshit you. We got us another 10 right here. We at $20. We'll be on tonight. We'll be on tonight, man. Y'all over here bullshitting. Y'all thinking Mo ain't coming to the strip club, man. We doing it. We twenty dollars deep right now. We twenty dollars deep right now. What are we talking about? We just spent twenty dollars. Y'all making it seem like niggas is broke in here. Y'all making it seem like we we didn't already spend twenty dollars. It's only been it's only been thirty seconds. We just got in the strip club. We didn't blew twenty dollars, and y'all talking about more two dollars is disrespectful. Man, listen, I'm trying to tell Bay I got you. We twenty dollars. I don't care what y'all talking about. Y'all can hey, y'all can judge me all you want. I just spent twenty dollars in in the lure. Yeah, twenty. We twenty dollars deep right now, man. You know, we ain't bullshitting. All verified. The 10 to take care of her. Two for the coffee. Five for the meal. And two for the, like, she's not giving me a dance. A lap dance costs five, ten, fifteen dollars, seven dollars. She's just on the stage. I'm just throwing two dollars right now. I want to get warmed up, y'all. Come on, man. When y'all go to the casino, do y'all put a thousand dollars on one game? No, you warm up. You do a little hundred there. You do a little bit there. But we ain't at the casino, so let me get some food on my stomach first. We tw I didn't spend twenty dollars. Now, if y'all ain't respecting twenty dollars, then man, y'all rich. And if twenty dollars to y'all ain't a lot, go ahead and hit that cash app M O E D O T J. Drop twenty dollars in the cash app. If twenty dollars ain't nothing to you, drop twenty in the cash app, man. You know I'm gonna use it for good. You know what I'm saying? Drop 20 in the cash app, M-O-E-D-O-T-J. Everybody clowning that $2. Everybody in the chat right now, put $2 in the cash app so Mo can hit the strip club. We got 45 people in here with that, that $90. Everybody put $2 in the cash app so I can hit the strip club this weekend because $2 ain't enough. People just told me $2 for someone on the stage ain't enough, so I need more money than that. Come on. Y'all got to help me out. Y'all got to help me out. Come on now. She talking about Tonk. He said, Tonk ain't the only nigga getting money. Maybe I could take care of you. Mazi said, just give her money and move on. Nah, well, that's the thing. I'm eating, I'm eating my meal. I want breakfast. All right. So we were just laughing about meat on a bowl of strawberries. So you can't have meat on the bowl of strawberries at your own house. You can't even enjoy a breakfast and a coffee with a nice woman dancing in front of you. It's getting to a point where you can't do nothing in America. You can't do nothing in America. Hey, thank you, Candace, for the $5. Oh, shit, $5. Hey, that's double what we was asking for. All right, cool. Oh, hey, we in the strip club. We in the strip club, y'all. Hey, Hope, thank you for that 10. Oh, we doing that on the, the live earlier. All right, thank you. All right, hey, Candace just gave us five. Candace just gave us five, so we good. So for $5, that's two dances on the stage. Uh, as I was saying, Tonk ain't the only nigga getting money, baby, and I can take care of you. So if you want this $5, you want this five dollars that Candace just sent? You better get back up there and get to dancing. But instead of dancing, this motherfucker, he pulled out a little bit more money, and she ain't even dancing. So I'm like, all right, let me go back in the pocket. Another two dollars, another two dollars, another two dollars. That's gonna go on top of the ten where I can take care of Bay. So that's twelve dollars over there. We had twenty two dollars tonight. But then she take a bite of this nigga food. So now I got to spend another $5 on a whole nother meal because this motherfucking animal then grab my shit with this goddamn claw and say, 
And we already know she be wilding the fuck out when it come to food. So now I got to drop another $5. One, two, three. Five. I got four ones left. I don't want to go into the fives yet. I don't want to start breaking the fives and the tens yet. So we just spent $22 already. How much money we got left? Hold on. We got 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. We got $34 left. We got to buy another meal for $5. Was it 35, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. All right. $34. We got to spend another five on another meal. That takes it down to $29 and 27 total. Now y'all see why I don't come to the strip club, man. You see how fast all of this money just went and we've only been here for 30 seconds. We ain't been in this strip club but 30 seconds and I'm almost $50 deep. $50 deep and I didn't get nothing out of this but her asking about my homeboy and her eating my goddamn breakfast. Now you see why I don't go to the strip club? It is a scam. The girls in here eating your food. They asking police ass questions. Now y'all see why I don't go to the strip club. Alexa, what's 29 plus 27? 29 plus 27 is 56. Came in here with $56, y'all, and they didn't already took half. They took over half of what I came in here with within the first 30 seconds man i'm not telling anyone how to spend their money but man choose wisely strippers hate me when mo coming that motherfucker mo is calculating what i came in with i ain't asking for that many ones but i'm gonna get some ones uh let me get fifty dollars in one excuse me let me get fifty dollars in ones uh when i'm eating my wings strippers get away <laughs> no you cannot have one back the fuck up I ain't buying no drink. I'm in the strip club. I'm just here because someone invited me. I ain't even want to pull up here. But I got $50. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to make this 50 work. What would y'all do if a stripper ate your food? Be real. Be real with me. What you doing if a stripper ate your food? Exactly. I'm asking the manager. As soon, I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm one of those, I'm I'm one of those people. They be like, man, Mo, you tripping? No, I'm going to the manager of the strip club. I'm going to the manager and saying, hey, one of your employees bit my motherfucking breakfast. They bit that motherfucker with their hands too. I need a refund on the breakfast, and I need a refund. I threw three hundred dollars tonight. I threw $300 up there tonight and the stripper ate my shit. I need to be compensated $500, bro. I mean, I bought breakfast. I spent about $400, $450 up there. Like, come on, man. I need all that money back, man. I spent the band tonight. I came in here and threw $1,500 and she didn't bit my shit. I need at least $3,000, bro. I'm going to the manager. I'm, I'm getting her fired. I don't care. I'm writing a report, a comment card or something. I'm reporting her. You're not eating my breakfast. I came in here for a coffee and some breakfast. I threw $10,000. Now she didn't took my $10,000 and ate my breakfast. No, y'all got to give me $20,000 back. Someone got to come up off of $30,000. Because I know when I came in here and I spent $50,000 cash, I was expecting grade A service. My coffee was kind of cold. She ate the meal. I'm going to need $100,000. Because now I'm... I'm you know, I got PTSD from coming in here. I, I can't even eat food at restaurants now. I'm going to need at least a million. I'm going to need at least a million. I got PTSD. I can't go to restaurants anymore. I, I'm scared of strippers. She ate my meal. Whenever I hear the word breakfast, I cuddle up and ball up. Man, I need, a, I need at least $10 million, bro. When I really think about it, $100 million will work. $100 million will work for this lawsuit. Y'all need to figure it out, but I tried to be in there and be nice. I tried to be nice. You know what? I want all my money back. All of it. I'll take this and this.
Yep, don't worry about it. And I don't walk around with cash. So don't be trying to rob me in real life because you'll never see me with $50 in cash, man. I might go spend all of this tomorrow and go buy a lottery ticket or save some of it for a haircut. Oh, it's only $56. It ain't even enough for a fucking haircut. Shakara, the prices were going up because I started thinking about everything that was going on. I wasn't making the prices up, man. I was just thinking about everything that happened. Tracy said, how you go from 100 to a hundred to a meal? I don't know. That's what my lawyer said to ask for. My lawyer told me. Well, for my haircuts, I pay 60. It's 55 for a haircut in your beard. It's 60 for a haircut beard with the hot towel on it. So I just pay the 60. But then I take out an 80 piece every time I go. Because I don't carry cash like that. So I go up there, take out an 80 piece, tell them to give me 15 back. So I give them like 65, 70 on a good day. If I'm about to leave like out the country, I give them 70. Because he know, hey man, hook that shit up. Hook it up. It is what it is, and I'm getting thrown out like Chrome. Nah, man, why am I getting... Look, when I came in here and I was trying to spend my money, everybody clowned me. They said $2 is disrespectful. They said $2 is disrespectful. You know what? We need to bring... We need to have, we need to have a stripper on the channel. Is two dollars disrespectful on the stage? Like the stage is free money. Well, not free money, but stage is like collective money. In order to get money on the stage, you got to do your thing. Stage money ain't guaranteed money. You got to do your thing on the stage. Now, if you come and I and I and I personally ask you for a dance, then that's money going straight to you. This is you. You pay for that. You on the clock, baby. Two songs, three songs. But when you on the stage, it's just coming to the stage. That's all that is. Just coming to the stage. It's up to you to put your, hey, what are the three Gs? No grind, no grit, no greatness. Mm -hmm. We seen how they were giving it up over at P-Valley in the paint. So I will, I don't expect anything less. And I wasn't even throwing money at the paint. That's because I was cool with old girl, Mississippi. I was cool with her a little bit, but me and Roulette, we was really hitting it off. But we go in the back, and it's like an episode of Players Club back here. They got so many lockers. I said, damn, how many strippers they got? But this is Houston. No, this ain't Houston. This is Tennessee. I think $2 is good. I'm not big meat, y'all. I ain't got $2,000 I can put on your waist. I ain't got two dollars I can put in your 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 dress, your outfit. I ain't got two thousand. I ain't I can't do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. Hey, what's a reasonable amount of money in the strip club? I told you I, the last time I went to a strip club was 2018. And I went in there and I was cool with one of the bartenders that I knew. She worked at one of the clubs. She was in there, she was hooking me up. I got some wings. I chilled. If now the girls want to come over and sit and talk to me, cool. If I'm going to give you a little bit of bread, I am. But, man, I ain't about to be asking for no dance or nothing. I'm chilling. I'm listening to some music. Nigga said, let's hit the strip club after the club. I came. I said, I'm going to give you something to eat. I'm not about to trick off. I paid $20 at the door to get in this shit. I shouldn't have to pay $20 to get in and then have to pay for a dance. I should get $20 and I should come in here with a little ticket. You pay $20 at the door, you get a ticket. You get one free dance. When they turn in the tickets off the twenty dollar door entrance, they get like uh seven dollars or something. Yeah. But what's a reasonable amount for a regular person? So I know next time I go in there. And do I need to come with my own stacks or do I need to go in there? Well, I'm definitely not about to be walking around with no stacks on me. Was it 1999? What we saying? Three hundred dollars is a good night in the strip club. I'm not paying. I'm saying, like, what would y'all pay? You already know I'm going in there with, like, a $50, $100 max budget. And that $100 is for drinks. I'm 
Oh, Angel talking about I ain't never been to no strip club. Man, two dollars is good. If they just on the stage, you're just throwing two dollars is all. But we got the whole crew in here. And they talking about, man, you got to get your dances together. You can't be going out there wilding out like that, man. Ain't nobody trying to see that shit. They trying to see you up on the roof, on the ceiling, hanging. You know what I'm saying? We want to see them go out. We want to see you go out and do your thing. You got to risk it for the biscuit in here. Now, I ain't going to lie. I ain't big on the strip club, but them three over there in the side, the sidekicks, because this one's the leader. She's the leader. We know that she's the leader. But the three sidekicks, I got $7 a piece. 21 total for all three of y'all. What we going to do? Let me get um, the 24 wings, which I want lemon pepper. It won't hot. Let me get 24 wings. Uh, wait, how much is 24 wings? $23. Make it uh, make it 12 wings. Make it 12 wings. Uh, three shots for them. Give me a double hen and coke. Hey dog, I ain't gonna be able to get y'all on this one, man. I, I ain't got them for shit. Y'all could. All right. How much is it? $72. God damn. Uh, hold on. Let me see real quick. One, two, three, four. You said how much is it? 72? Y'all take card? Cause I ain't, I ain't got that in cash. I only came with like this all this cash to, you know, to, to make it rain. Y'all do take card? All right, bet, 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 bet. Cool. Now, I'm gonna give you a tip out of this, so I'm just gonna give you the exact price. Yeah, man. I'm in there trying to make my budget work. Now, I'll tell you one thing, man. All the strippers, they like I said, they just going to be mad at me. They just going to be mad at me. But I don't care what inflation is. I'm paying the 2004 prices. <laughs> I'm paying the 2004 prices. $5 a table dance. I'm paying $5 a table dance. Seven fifteen. dollars Hell, hell no. $20 a dance? No. I got five on it. I got five on it. Oh no, I went to the strip club in uh in 2019. I went to Miami. 2019, I went to a strip club G5. Man, when I tell you I was in that, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the last time I ever went. Arizona 2018, and then 2019, I went to Miami. <sighs> Man, I spent like a hundred dollars in there. Well, it's probably like a hundred and fifty. I like, man, these prices is ridiculous, man. Them drinks in there, a double henny was almost like forty bucks. I was like, nigga, ain't nobody about to be sitting in here drinking no double hennessy for no forty funky ass dollars, nigga. Please, I told my dog, I like, man, I'm gonna finish my drink. Like, I'm get, I'm gonna get two of them. I ain't gonna lie, but as I finish my second one, I'm there. I'm not about to be tipping. I didn't spend a hundred dollars on drinks, nigga. Please. I don't give a fuck how bad they are in uh, motherfucking Miami. Nigga, I'm not paying that price. Shout out to Miami, though. But I ain't, I ain't got it. I ain't come down here. My budget when we went down to Miami, it wasn't for no strip club. I did not go down there to budget for no strip club. I budget to get to my... Well, when it comes to flights and hotels, that doesn't go on my budget. Food don't go on my budget. And liquor don't go on my budget. But my budget is like... When I said a budget, it's for everything else outside of that. There's not the essentials, but everything else. And let me tell you, the strip club, for two double henny, I paid like $89 or some shit like that. And you know you got a tip. So I almost came up off 100 bucks, man. Fuck that shit. I mean, I'm not about to be sitting in here, man. Mo get out. Mo about to tear down some drinks. And I'm not about to pay 100 for every two drinks, man. I'm about to go through like six drinks, man. You think I'm, man. $300, nigga, please.
Yeah, Chrissy G5 in the cut, man. But y'all know me. Well, back in I mean, back then, I you know, I didn't really care. I'd go places. It didn't matter to me. But I was young a while. Now you wouldn't catch me in G5 unless I had like. I mean, I, it wasn't bad, but nah, man, shit didn't change now. I ain't gonna get y'all kicked out of the club. I'm chill when I'm in the club, man. When I'm in the club, see, when y'all see me on here, I'm talking, I'm active with y'all. But in real life, I'm chill. I joke around and shit, but you ain't gonna see me. I'm not really talking like that in real life. But we get on here, we're talking about the shows. And right now, Hazley, she's like, I love Joe Dance. But no one else is loving it. And she's over here using profound. So it's the sun up the next day. They coming out the lure. Hazley is arguing with her man. He got the, the 18 inches on there, yellow with the flame. Open the door, Johnny. Open the door. I fucking hate you. He's like, I hate you too, man. Get off the truck. She said, I paid for the truck and I paid for the house. And one thing I did appreciate about our girl, Dre, she just walked to the car. My bad, Carmen. She walked to the car. Didn't give a fuck. Ain't just I got flewed out. No, I ain't never been flewed out nowhere. <laughs> the only time I've been flown anywhere was when my parents were buying the tickets or when the military was buying my tickets. No one else has ever bought a flight for me in my life. I do all my own booking because ain't nobody about to cancel my return flight, nigga. I need to be in control of everything. Plus, I ain't met no woman that, but hey, mama, fly you out. Now, I've met a lot of women in my life, but not once have they, uh, they ever fixed their lip or their hands to text a nigga like, Mo, I'm going to fly you out. Man, the motherfuckers ain't flying me out nowhere. Plus, most of the time, I'm not going to a city to see somebody. You can come out here to my city. Now, I don't know what niggas you dealing with back at home. You already know how I feel about going over people's houses, let alone staying the night. Especially somebody I'm dealing with, man. Hell no. Hey, man, I be little, 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 listen, y'all. Y'all know how Mo is. Mo gonna tell it like it is, man. But look, everything I tell y'all, man, we be seeing it in these shows. And it's like, damn, man, if they would just listen to Mo back in 2022, probably still be alive in 2023. Now I can't know if they talking about they're going to fly me out. Yeah, I would think it was a setup. Like, why you want to fly me out? I ain't never had nobody fly me nowhere. Let alone, I'm not going to let no one book me a ticket unless it's like some business type shit. Or it's like one of my homeboys like, hey, man, hey, we're going to get these tickets for you, man. Don't worry about it. All right, bet. But nigga, none of my homeboys are doing that. Like, I got homeboys that be like, hey, man, if we go somewhere, don't worry about it. I already got a room. If you going, you just got to get your flight and shit. Like, we cool with doing some shit like that, man. I got an Airbnb, got like three rooms. We got another room. If you want to come, nigga, you just get you a flight. But niggas ain't in it. We ain't, ain't no one in our group chat talking about, hey, nigga, I'm going to book you a flight. We don't book nobody's flight. You book your own flight. I don't know what your schedule look like. I ain't booking you no flight, nigga. Look, I tell all my homeboys when I put it in the chat, because I'm I'm the planner. I, hey, I look shit out. I be on Google Maps. I be looking at everything that's close, how we can get to a train station, all that shit. I be doing all of that. But I put it in the chat. Six months prior to me going somewhere, I already know. I already told you guys in May I'm trying to I'm trying to go to Brazil or something. July I'm trying to go to Europe, and then at the end of the year I'm probably gonna do another Asian tour, or I might do South America again. But all my homeboys know what I'm on before I do it, because when I start putting flights and the dates that I'm going and the shit that I booked. All you have to say is you in or you out. I don't ask twice. I put it in the chat. If you need a reminder, I'll let you know. If you ask about it, I'll let you know. But if you don't bring it up, that tells me that you are not serious about going on a trip and I will not waste my time asking you again, do you want to roll with us? And I mean, that's just how our chat is. Niggas know if I put it in the chat, hey, I'm going to this place. Anybody want to roll? They be like, hey, give me a month and I'll let you know. All right, bet. Well, here's my flights. This is the time I'm getting there because you want to get there around the same time because some of these countries, you got to drive an hour away from the airport. You might have to get your own shit or you can meet up with us 
get there within an hour. If I get there at five, you get there at seven, I'll wait at the airport for you so we can all ride together. But if you get in there at 10, nigga, you're on your own. I'm at the crib. I'm at the motel with Dre, pulling the fuck up. And if it's legal, smoking. If it's legal, smoking. Because you already know, when I show up to a spot, we go into the room, we popping a bottle, then we hitting the bar. Go to the room, pop a bottle, hit the bar, come back to the room, shower, change, get ready to go do what we do. But, hey, man, let me use the bathroom real quick. Y'all got me wilding out in here, man. We didn't did three simplies. We got the smoke back in the air. I'm old IJ. We didn't hit the strip club. We made $50 cash last. You know what I'm saying? We Damn, we just spent all the money. We ain't got no money for the goddamn motel. We in fucking Tennessee sleeping out the back of the car, man. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button, man. We're going to talk a little bit of shit. And we're going to carry on, y'all. We're going to carry on, y'all. Good show, though, man. I'm definitely liking it, man. Hit that like button, man. Room service. <laughs> you see this shit up here, Kendall? There ain't no room service here. There ain't no room service here. There ain't no room service here, nigga. It's hang your shit out on the balcony, nigga. They be sending emails to you talking about, hey, man, no no clothes drying out on the balcony, nigga. Over here, there ain't no rules. Do what the fuck you want to do. No room service. Room service? Look at this nigga. You think he getting room service? This nigga is asleep. This nigga's in the chair farting. He got that leg linked over like this. He trying to let one of them silent ones out. She's like, damn, nigga. Yeah, we know this move right here. Room service? Look. Everybody sitting outside the room. Don't nobody want to be in the rooms. And we're going to talk about how junky this room was. This shit was disgusting. But hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you new. Support the channel. Cash apps at the bottom of the screen. We getting a suspect board for power. Ghost. Because just like on Ghost, everybody in this show is a suspect until we find out who's killing who. Right now, there is a gentleman that is dead in Houston, Texas by the name of Khalid. He's dead. We don't know who killed him yet. So everybody is a suspect. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. We'll be right back. <laughs> Angel, you thought they were saying get high? Nah, they saying can't hide.
I didn't know y'all was still in here, man. All right, look. Let's pick it up, man. We had three hours. We in episode two. We just found out in 2016, $50. You're pulling it close. For $50, you're pulling it close in the strip club. So I know for damn sure in 2023... Fifty dollars ain't gonna work in the strip club, man. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. Fifty dollars don't work in the strip club, y'all. And then y'all were talking about, hey, Mo, two dollars that ain't enough. Oh, you being cheap. Look how she's fucking living. Why would I give her more than $2 and this is how she's living? They got the McDonald's McRib back here. They got chicken bones. They got, this better be ranch. This better not be blue cheese. This better be ranch. If this is blue cheese, I'm done with the show. Dre does not eat blue cheese. This better be ranch. We got food wrappers in here. What is this? I thought this said Dunkin' Donuts or something. We don't know what the fuck that is. What up, babe? She got the hair dryer in the sink. She got the towel over it. I said, how is she living? I said, this is wild. You know, one time I was in Vegas. I think it, I don't know what year it was. One time I was in Vegas and I met this woman at the swimming pool. And after the pool party, we were staying in the Venetian. They were staying in the Palazzo Towers. You know, the two buildings are connected together. So I went over there with her. And it was like six of them in one room. Man, the hair dryer was in the sink, nigga. When I tell you I was scared to wash my hands over there. Nigga, in my head, I was thinking, man, I'm going to try to move this hair dryer out of here. This motherfucker, yink, yink, even though it was unplugged, man. For some reason, I was so fucking nervous. I don't know why I was nervous. Maybe it's because I was drinking. But dog, when I seen the hair dryer in the sink right here, man, that shit gave me flashbacks. I'm like, damn, them motherfuckers. Because I went in the bathroom to rinse my hands off after we came into the room. Nigga, the hair dryer was in there. It was all kinds of makeup and shit. I'm like, nigga, I need to rinse my hand off. But I thought that damn blow dryer was going to electrocute me. It wasn't even plugged. I don't know what made me so scared that day. So seeing this, I was like, man, let me get the, the picture of this. I don't know what they, I man, I must have been told the fuck up, bro. I tell you, when I go to Vegas, we stay at the Venetian. We used to go to the little towel pool party. I go up there, dog, every day. I ain't going to lie to you. I'm buying like three or four pitchers out of them, uh, like the lemonade. We started putting Hennessy at the bottom of the lemonade. It's like $75. I buy like three or four of them a day. For some reason, I went back to the room with her because she said she had some homegirls, because it was me, her, and one of her friends. She says he got some home, some more homegirls. So we all right, like, all right, bet. We'll go back with y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to give her the room number so she could text them the room number so they could just pop up. So I was like, all right, bet. I'll come with you, and then we can all walk over there. But I had to rinse my hand off for some reason. It was a hair dryer in the sink. And, man, I was scared. <laughs> It was like, I don't know if all six were staying in there, but I know for sure four of them were staying in there. And that motherfucker, that shit looked like, well, it wasn't food around, but it was like like suitcases and they just had everything out and the, the hairdryer was in the sink. And that was the main thing that stood out to me. I was like, man, that's dangerous as fuck, man. Like, all right, yeah, they got a junkie room, but dog, somebody could fucking die in here. That's what was going through my mind. I said, nigga, there's a fucking hair dryer in the sink. 
I don't know what it was, but in my head, nigga, I must have been drunk. But I was thinking, nigga, somebody gonna die. I ended up getting it out though. I took the towel. One, of the, I don't. It may have been somebody dry towel. I ain't gonna lie to you, because there's only one towel on the wall. Like there was towels in front of the sink, but there was one towel on the wall. Nigga, this is a true story. I grabbed the hair dryer with the towel and just took it out the sink, and I like dried off the uh, the metal part on the plug, and I left. I said, dog, I can't fuck with this. <laughs> I, I can't fuck with it. This is how y'all living. This is too reckless for me. This place is nasty. Now, I get it. We in Vegas. Y'all do four to room. That's fine. Y'all can share beds. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Get it how you live. But, dog, the hair dryer in the sink, nigga. When I tell you, I came in there, I was cool. I was chilling. I bet, man. The boys ain't going to believe me. I'm about to bring a crew through. Nigga. They like, Mo, man, you were lying. I'm like, nigga, I was not lying. <laughs> I'm telling y'all the truth, man. I couldn't have them come over. Fuck up our room. No. She got the eyelashes on here. Now, I ain't gonna lie, man. Ladies, don't get mad at me. I threw away some eyelashes before. I threw away some eyelashes before. Don't leave them shits on my sink. If they on my sink and you leave, they go into the trash. Don't leave them on my sink. Hey, do you have my lashes? I said, oh, I threw them away, man. I didn't know what the shit was at first. And that's how I found out that they were eyelashes. <laughs> I threw them motherfuckers away. I said, man, I'm leaving that shit here. But she's in the hotel room. She got Nyja up because Nyja is queen. We know that. We know that Nyjah is queen. And if you don't you don't agree, Dre, that ain't me saying it. That's them. So she's sitting here. And Reggie Wilkins, he gets the tweet. He got 99 followers. He's following 502 people. Reggie Wilkins said, that nigga got what she deserves. Stupid as fuck. Now he's talking about Marissa, her sister. And this is how it is on Twitter, man. So you got to... Man, you just, it is what it is on Twitter, man. There's no saving you on Twitter. Twitter is like one of the most wildest places on earth. You can go in Twitter. You could be having the best day of your life. Niggas on Twitter, they don't care. Once social media gets a hold of anything that you do, positive or negative, they going to clown your ass. It don't matter. You could be like, I just saved the dog, and it's a video you Catching a dog before it gets hit by like a truck. Rolling over in the street. Everybody's like, yeah. Niggas would get on there and say, man, that nigga did that in Black Air Force Ones. Nigga, why is that an issue that he had Black Air Force Ones on? He saved the dog. Twitter is not a safe place. You got to be heartless when you go in there. Y'all know I be on here trolling. Well, it's niggas worse than me. At least I tell y'all I'm bullshitting and I'll cut it out after a while. I won't troll y'all all night. You'll get maybe a two, three minute segment. These niggas will go on your Twitter and troll you, nigga. And then they will get that shit to go viral. And once it goes viral, nigga, just go ahead and nip it in the butt, nigga, because everybody's clowning on you now. Now it then got real. All right, Torn, hold it down, Mr. 60K. Hold it down, Mr. 60K. Doing it big out here. That's what it's all about. 60,000 subscribers, man. One day we're going to get there, y'all. One day we're going to get there. He said, Nigel could die tomorrow, and I wouldn't miss one song. Hey, that's disrespectful right there. This is real disrespectful. He he wrote this in the middle of the daytime. This ain't like a late night tweet where you may have been drinking or something. You may have just woke up. No, this is midday right here, 1232. This nigga meant it. Jesse Small Pat. Put the motherfucking beehive down here. Oh, yeah, they on your ass. They on your ass. Shout out to Beyonce. <laughs> Shout out to Nyjah. But hey, if y'all want to come spam a couple of my YouTube videos with bees, go ahead and do it. 
go ahead and do it. I need that algorithm to pick me up. You know what I'm saying? That that you know what I'm saying that engagement. Go ahead, put the bees on there. But I'm on y'all. I'm I'm with y'all. I ain't got nothing against y'all. Just spam the bees in there. Let's just let YouTube know. You know what I'm saying? We watching. At Amazon Prime, we about to spam it for y'all, man. Holla at your boy, man. Let me be in season two of Swarm. But I don't want to die, though. I don't want to die, man, because it's looking like everybody's getting killed off. They get one episode and they get killed off. But she sees this tweet. She said, you know what? We going in. Naja could die tomorrow and I wouldn't miss one song. Subject, MJ's right shoe. Name, Reggie Wilkins. Location, Fayetteville, Tennessee. Address, question marks. They call him Tonk. Titan. Fans for life. Mark it down. Mariota, 40 TDs this year. Boy, was he wrong. Man, look at my dog, man. Look at that profile picture, boy. You better not have this profile picture on Twitter, because nigga... As soon as you put this picture up on Twitter and they see some shit that you tweeted out, nigga, everybody's clowning you, man. And there's nothing you can do. They're going to be on your head for at least a week. Maybe, maybe three days. Attention span nowadays ain't as long as it used to be. Now, this is 2016, though. 2016, this shit will go viral. This right here would be a meme. Whenever you talk about you getting money, this is what they're going to say you look like. You know what I mean? You getting money. Oh, okay, yeah. And then they post this picture. You're like, yeah, you getting money, all right. Yeah, this is Tonk. This is old boy's homeboy. Remember he asked, I mean, she asked, who is your friend? She was like, Reggie, nigga, that wear the Titans hat. So this is the Titans hat. This is who she was asking about. So she drove all the way down here because of this tweet. So she went from Houston to Tennessee because of this tweet right here. Nigel could die tomorrow and I wouldn't miss one song. Like, come on, man. <laughs> I told you, and they zoomed in on it too, dog. That picture is terrible. That's Otis from Hightown? I don't know who he is, but he hitting that fucking cigarette, though. Tonks Towing established 2003, so my man had his job for, what, 13 years? Tonks Towing, huh? 9311640542. He was doing pretty good. Looked like he got like four and a half stars on his Google reviews. Osito? Osito? I don't know what that's at. Well, Hazley just showed up. Hazley or whatever her name is. She got the big ass thing of sweet tea over here too, boy. Look at that. But just like any one of us Moet, someone popping up at our spot, we wondering, uh, what the fuck do you want? She's like, hey girl, what's going on? Can I come in? She's like, what do you want? Well, you know, uh, I'm done with him. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to get out of there and do my thing. You got any tampons? She's like, nigga, I got motherfucking napkins. Halsey. Her real name is Haley, though, ain't it? It's like Haley, but she goes by Halsey. Or Halsey, or whatever it is. She said, I got napkins. I said, man, that's a little nasty, ain't it? Oh, well, it's Paris Jackson. No, I got to look at these cast members. Oh, Paris Jackson. Michael Jackson's daughter. Oh, Haley. Yeah, Paris Jackson is Haley. 
All right, that's what's up then. Is that Michael Jackson's daughter, y'all? I don't know. That's what they told us it was. I don't know. But don't matter who her father is, you ain't getting a tampon. You getting a napkin. You getting a napkin. But they looking and she wants to hang out and I'm I'm looking just like her. I'm thinking, hang out, nigga. I don't fuck with you like that. She said, yeah, well, I'm about to get something to eat. You trying to roll? And she had to think about it because she didn't really want to be around her like that. You know how it is. But then she looked down. Now, you remember earlier, it was just wings. So by the time that she got here, got settled, the ants came marching one by one. The years go marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. The years go marching two by two, hurrah, hurrah. The ants are in here, they wilding out, and that stomach got the rumbling. She said, hey, you want to get something to eat? At first, she was saying no. She seen them ants and said, hell yeah. Then they get in here and they start talking about who is their favorite artist. I forgot who her her favorite artist was, but she ain't got 26 Grammys. I know for sure. I knew for sure that Nyjah got 26 Grammys. We learned that throughout this episode. 26 Grammys. That's the golden number. 26 Grammys. Two, six Grammys. We always got to remember that. Just in case. If I ever ask you guys, what is the lucky number on my channel? The lucky number is 26. From here on out, if I ask the lucky number, you got to spam 26. That's how I know you're still here with me. But they ain't here talking. They going back and forth. She talking about how her boyfriend be bullshitting. And she said that he low-key ain't really feeling it because she, she's black. You're black. She looked at her like, wait. What do you mean you're black? Like a black person? She said, yeah, my dad's half. You sure your dad's half or he's not full white? So they're looking at each other. She's like, yeah, I'm black. My dad's half, so that makes me like a fourth or something like that. And she had to question her again. Wait a minute. You you mean you like African-American? You mean you like black, black? Or... Yeah, yeah, you know, my daddy half. Now, I'm in the back. I'm on the grill. Who you think made that eggs and bacon? That was me back there. But in between orders, I had a chance. I went up front and got me a little orange juice, and I'm listening. And I seen this white woman tell this black woman that she's black. So I looked. I, I, I don't know. I'm not I'm not saying she's lying. Or not. I'm just saying from what I was looking when I heard it, I said, what? Your dad was half. So was his dad black? Wait, wait. Your dad was half black. So you're black, a fourth of black technically, but you don't look like you're black. Excuse me, ma'am. Did, did I hear y'all correctly? Was I in the right conversation? <laughs> so she's looking at her and she's talking about, yeah, you know, well, we got to get out of here. I got to order him some food and bring him back some shit. When they get back to the spot, she's like, hey, man, I need you to come in the crib with me. I need you to come in the crib with me because if not, he going to be tripping thinking that I was fucking around. Dre heard that. Dre was like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm here to drop you off. I'm not I'm not here to hang out with y'all. You know what I'm saying? I'm not 
I'm not friends with you. You needed a ride. I, I gave you a ride home. She said, oh, that's my fucking truck. I paid for it. She's like, please just come in with me. Hey, are y'all going inside the house? Y'all going inside the house or y'all chilling? I don't know who kids they are, but they say they black. <clears throat> All right. Fuck it. Let's rock with it. But Dre, I want you to come in the house. Please, please come in the house with me. Please, please, please. She's like, nah, I'm good. I'm trying to dip out. When they go in there, <coughs> I don't know this guy's name. There's really no reason to know it, but we can just call him uh, Andrew. Let me see if I can find his name. Oh, his name is just Sir. So they call him Sir. So Sir in here, he lifting weights. He getting right, man. Sir think he about to hit the beach. He think he the rock. He getting ready for this summer. He turning up, man. He don't give a fuck. He trying to get right. My girl work at the strip club. She washing drawers. I'm in here getting right. We a power couple. Now, Dre goes off to the back. She had to use the bathroom. In the front, you just hear that nigga. He got all this. You, oh, yeah. <laughs> Once we've seen all this in here, this UFC shit, this essential plus water, this nigga think he's somebody. Sir, he, <laughs> sir, give it up, bro. At some point in life, you just got to know, hey, no one to fold him. But he's in here. He's talking about, would you give me a double? I asked for a single. You know, I can't eat that much fucking bread. She said, well, you better clean that up because I just spent my hard on money on it. He said, fuck that. I can't eat that bread. You know I'm in a competition. So they going at it and they yelling. In the back, Dre in there. She like, nigga, what are you talking about? She turned the light off because just like me, just like me, Dre's hearing all this shit. And you never want to be involved in this. I always tell you guys, and y'all laugh at me, but when you hear a commotion, go the other way. Well, she hears a commotion. While they arguing, she just sneaks out the door and gets the fuck out of there. That's the perfect move right there. Remove yourself from the situation. You ain't got nothing to do. You didn't want to come in here in the first place. It ain't physical right now. It's like, I don't know what the fuck going on, but guess what? I'm not going to be a victim of whatever the fuck they got going on. So she sneaks up out of there. She sneaks out of there after seeing <laughs> seeing an argument go down. She pulls up and starts doing her makeup. She really don't give a fuck, man. She be in her own world at all times. I was like, man, I fuck with it. But she's watching her sister's tutorial. And when she gets back to the crib, y'all homegirl is already in there. She got the do-rag on. She talking about, I told the front desk, we were best friends. They let me in. Yeah, I'm going to march myself down to that front desk. And I'm going to have a few words with the front desk. So her ass is in here. And this... If you don't get your ass out my motherfucking bed with that box of pizza in your feet by my god darn motherfucking pillow... This shit's already a pig style, but you're not about to put your feet by my pillows. And you got your ass out, nigga. This is my room. Put some fucking clothes on. She kicking it. She comfortable. She on the bed. I be motherfucking god damn. A motherfucker come to my spot and I got to sit in the chair and they on the bed. Nigga, if you don't get the fuck up out my bed, nigga. She in here with the box of pizza. Ah. <laughs> this the funniest shit ever. 
Our girl Dre over here looking like, man, what the fuck, man? What did I just get into? This motherfucker popped up at the spot. Now, she did shower. She didn't, she ain't had no tampon. Remember when she first came in the room, she asked, can I take the shower? So she at least waited to ask to take the shower. But she don't got no tampon. She's just on the bed, feet up in there. That's when you know you're having a good time. When you lay in the bed, your foot go up like that, that's when you're having a good time. Now, if you got both feet up kicking, hey, man. Yeah, you need to calm down. You need to sit up or something, bro. <laughs> hey, nigga, you better not be kicking your feet like that. Yeah, it's meat on bed, all right. Now, a girl, she going through her phone and she's just looking at people on Instagram. You know how it is. People take memes from places and they be saying, that's really how I'm feeling right now. They be putting up like posts talking about relationships and how they feeling. You know what I mean? Doing what they do. And she just scrolling through it. But she said, you know what? I'm tired of chilling. Let me go pull up on this nigga. She go to Sir's house. Sir's like any one of us. He on his phone while he in the bathroom. Sometimes your feet go asleep. Today, man, when I woke up, man, I, before I went to the gym, went to the bathroom, sat down on the toilet for a little bit, listened to some sports. Man, when I got up, I about damn near fell forward to the sink. Like, oh, Lord, my legs is gone, man. My shit went to sleep on me today, boy. It was nothing nice. I was in there for a minute, like, leaning over on the sink on my side, man. Like, I've been shot or something. Boy, that shit wasn't no joke today, man. I'm getting old. But he in here, he chilling. Then out of nowhere, he feels breeze in here. Someone's spraying some gas in here. He hop up. She to hit this nigga with the 20 pounder. Bow, right in the head. She got a nice respirator on too. Just a little half face. Like a 78, no. 6800 is a half face. 7800 is where I got the full face. So you ain't got to wear your own goggles. You just go all over the whole face. But she hit him in the head with the 20 pounder. We're like, damn, what the fuck is she on? She go ahead and knock this nigga out all over the sink, man. Look, there's some terrible ways to go out, y'all. They catching niggas. Every time we look up, somebody getting caught off guard, getting their ass whooped. I don't like that, man. Don't get your ass whooped. She dragging her body outside, and out comes our friend. Now, I don't know how she got here, but she got here quickly. She notices the body is all wrapped up. Now, at first, we think, damn, she might tell. She's going to have to get rid of her, too. And Dre's looking because she's waiting for her reaction. We trying to see how you going to move. Are you with us or are you against us? So she goes over there, starts kicking the body like, fuck you. You'll never do it again. Fuck you. Stopping them. I told y'all yesterday, I was with Carlton in the bowling alley stomping out old boy. This is what you got to do. You see what I'm saying? When I tell y'all stuff, I, I, I'm just telling y'all how it is. You got to get in there. <laughs> yeah, Dina, girl, I be knowing my mask, man. I ain't going to lie to you, man. That was a, that six years was probably one of the best time frames of my life, man. I learned a lot of shit that I didn't expect to learn. So to me, that was cool. I mean, I learned, you know. I learned how to thug it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but they kicking the body. Bah, bah, bah. They go out here and start digging holes. Now, Hell's Halsey, my bad. She talking about, I made lunch. I got us some sandwiches. We're going to kick it out here. She over here. She digging the hole. Bah, bah, bah. She said, oh, man, I feel so liberated. I feel like I could do whatever. We murked this nigga. And we all like, damn, what is taking our girl Dre so long? But Dre go down there. She come up with a gun. And bow. She ends her. I said. Well, at least she already has a hole dug. Even though that hole was probably only like two feet. At least they have a hole dug. And then she Googles. Who's Halsey? But they're going to see this big ass, this big ass hole that they didn't dug. 
this ground, this, this this dirt on the top, it's gonna be unsettled. There ain't gonna be no grass over it. You gotta put this shit out in the woods, woods, like deep in the woods. You can't just put this in the regular field. They're gonna see this shit. Plus, with the bodies in there, all the dirt, unless you move in some of the dirt, all the dirt ain't gonna be flat. It's still gonna be a little mound on it. Oh well, they dug up the bodies, or they dug up a hole for the bodies, and we getting out of here. And then right after that, she done bossed up on us. She started making that real money. She came in here doing her thing. And I said, oh. It's getting hot in here. She doing her thing. Now, everybody in there showing love. $10 here. $18 here. $50 here. 100 piece here. Niggas is throwing money. So now when I throw my $2, it just blends in. No one even knows. I'm up there half the song, you know what I'm saying? Half the song. I just threw one dollar. Uh, now I still got three minutes left before I need to throw my last dollar because everybody else is throwing money. Yeah, yeah, let me get rid of this last dollar. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? But she making that paper now. Everybody loving her. In my cricket letter, cricket letter. Ah, humpback, humpback. Ah, is that what they saying in there? No, they saying God. See, everybody going crazy. Now, she counting up that rack, though. She got that bankroll on her. Bankroll at the bankroll. Big money. I like it. She in the back doing her thing. Now, homegirl pull up, and I'm thinking, oh, no, nah, don't go with them. The last time we seen some strippers, the last time we seen some strippers tell somebody to leave the strip club to make some more money, they went to Junior's birthday party, and I was thinking, don't go with them. Please don't go with them. Don't, please, no, 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 no. Do not leave with them. They said, you want to make some more money? She said, yeah. Yeah. I want to make some more money. Well, I bet. We need a DD. Now, when they riding over there, the plan is it's some college boys. So as soon as I heard college baseball boys, I was like, yeah, they fucking with some white boys. And they up in Tennessee, there got to be some white boys. But they talking about, man, it's $1,000 to smash. Don't matter who it is, $1,000. They coming up off it for a thou out. They coming up off it for a thou out back in the day, 2016. They say, oh, 1,000 back in the day, 2016. That's $1,200 right now. So $1,200, hey, you can get what you want. You can get what you want. Oh, and $2 back in 2016 was $2.54. So it wasn't just $2. I was actually balling in there, y'all. But then they ask her, what does she think about men? Because everybody like, man, they only here. The only purpose they got is to pay bills, cash them checks. Where are them dollars at? Throw them dollars in the club. That's all they good for. Now, Nigel, she told us that women don't need no man. You don't need nobody for nothing, nothing. You can get satisfaction in life without sex. Yeah, I said satisfaction in life without sex. So satisfaction without the sex, you got to remove the S, and all you got is adifaction. Not satisfaction no more, adifaction. That's all you got. That's all you got. No sex, no satisfaction. Adifaction, that's all you're getting. I mean, that's how they live. And now the girls are talking about, fuck that, nigga. We want this money. It's a thousand dollars popping it for pimp for a thousand. I'm like, damn, a thousand dollars is a lot of money. But whoever it is, these boys got some bread. So I knew it had to be some white guys because a thousand, man, niggas ain't paying a thousand dollars in high school. I mean, in college, they, they ain't got it. So they all laughing. 
She like, nigga, did you just use a Dijer quote? <laughs> now, you know, we not showing anything that they was doing in here, but we show up to the party and y'all already know what they playing. One of my favorite rappers of all time, that juvenile. Girl, you working with some ass here. Your badge here, make a nigga spend his cash here. His last year, hoes frown when I pass here. They mad here. You can ride in a jag here with dad yeah. You can smoke or buy a bag here, a grass here. Yeah, I'm a big time a flipper, yeah. Yeah. They got that back that ass up playing in the background. I said, oh shit, this is going down. A thousand dollars to smash. Niggas is well, this ain't niggas, these white boys are doing white boy shit. I'm talking lines. I'm talking about they doing shit with each other. Niggas is walking around naked. I said, what kind of party is this, nigga? Y'all got strippers in here. But they enjoying their time. Hey, man, more power to you. Now, Dre, on the other hand, she ain't even bobbing her head to Juvenile. Now, I take that as low-key disrespect. We respect Nyjah as the queen, but when Juvenile back that ass up, come on, you got to show love. Everybody know Juvenile, and she ain't doing nothing. She just sitting there. I'm like, man, that, that, hey, that's a low blow right there now. So she look around and she like, you know what? I'm about to get the fuck out of here. She go in the back room. Look like she got some French onion dip and some pretzels. That's a weird combination. Now, I do French onion dip with some like plain uh, potato chips, preferably Ruffles chips. Plain Ruffles chips with the French onion dip is good. Then we had this random white guy come in, and he he, he kind of weird. He talking about, man, you know, let me just do my thing while you eat the pretzels. I said, what, nigga? He's like, how about $100? He said, nah, it's going to be a band. So this dude started getting off with her eating. <laughs> she looking at him, talking about, <laughs> he looking at her, and he's like, man, I don't need you to do all that, but bite harder. I said, what the fuck is going on here? kind of sick shit is this then <laughs> then the leader come in and like i knew you was a freak <laughs> this motherfucker was eating some pretzels with some french onion dip while nigga was getting off like what the fuck a thousand dollars for that come on man So they dipping out. They got big bank. You know what I'm saying? They were wilding out in that motherfucker now. They, hey, hey, move that shit out the way. Hey, 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 move that shit out the way. Yeah, they living it up. They kicking it. And all of a sudden, you hear, bah, 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 boom. Like, what the fuck did happen? They talking about a flat tire, man. Let's go ahead and change the flat. Now, stripper friend number three. She's like, all right, I know how to change a flat. This ain't the 1800s. I got y'all. Hey, how many of y'all know how to change a flat? I'll change a flat now. If I got two flats, I think I'm calling the insurance. The last time I had a flat was on my truck. One of my 24s blew out. I had to call a truck, man. There wasn't no switching that motherfucker out. Not on the side of the road. There was no switch of that motherfucker out, man. I didn't have the proper jack for that. I need, hey, I need a tow truck to pick this motherfucker up. But she go back to the trunk. You got a spare? She said, no, no. They're like, damn, bitch. You got a dead body back there? They all looking at her like, hey, we, we trying to get up out of here. She started laughing. And that was one of the most awkward laughs ever. She said, ah, ah. Anyone that laughs like that, beware. Beware, y'all. So she going in, she laughing and shit. Ha ha, man, I'm just joking with y'all. You know, there ain't no dead body back here. 
We're like, man, this chick is really weird, man. I don't know what's up, but the girls they doing their thing. One of them throwing up. Hey, one of them throwing hey, that one right there, friend number two in the middle. Friend number two, nice. Friend number, I called her friend number three. No, friend number three is over here, the one that can change the tire. This one right here is savage, though. I knew she was a savage when she was throwing it up. When we first seen her throwing it up, I knew she was a savage. She's like, girl, do y'all thing. She said, nigga, not that. The other thing. I'm like, all right, here we go. This is what we came here for. What if she got Marissa body in there? I don't know. Nah, I don't know. Well, she'd have to dig up Marissa for that. Mm -hmm. But somebody pulled up in the truck. We're like, hey, what's up now? He's like, what's going on? She looked and she said, Tonk. They said, You be in a strip club, don't you? You be with that nigga that be throwing them two funky ass dollars. They be getting the breakfast with the coffee. Are oh, you talking about my dog Mo? Yeah, that's my nigga. Yeah. <laughs> he be showing y'all love, don't he? Man, that broke ass nigga be throwing two dollars. That nigga ain't shit. Man, that's my boy, man. Y'all ain't gonna be disrespecting him like that. Plus, he ain't gotta give y'all no money if he don't want to. Who you calling the hoe? Y'all need me to fix this truck or I mean this car or not? What y'all want, man? Y'all was talking shit first. All I was doing was talking shit back. You know what I mean? But she's like, let's go back to his house because he asked who car was. Now they towing this motherfucking big ass beans. This motherfucker take diesel. This motherfucker, they get back to the house. It's early in the morning, too. But this is normal stripper hours right now. This is prime stripper hours right now. And after the club, the sun coming up, y'all going to get something to eat. Everybody chilling. We still want to drink. Yeah, this is prime stripper time right here. This is that vampire hour. This is in between going to sleep and waking up. That, that moment where it's like, if you got an honest job, you know what I mean? If you got an honest job, you, you getting up for work, but if you out there, you doing your thing, you going to sleep. You know what I mean? You going to sleep, or you could be partying around that time, too. But he's like, hey, man, I'm going to go get that tequila. I'm going to go get us some shots. We're going to get some orange drink. We're going to kick it. The girl's like, yeah, that's what's up. She's going to say, who your favorite artist? He said, uh, my favorite juvenile. I don't know what am I supposed to say? She said, how many Grammys does juvenile have? Now we ain't going to use my boy juvenile. No. He said, little murder. He said, Little Murder. She said, How many Grammys Little Murder guy? He said, Oh, shit. Uh, one, I think. She said, One. Nigel got 26. What's the lucky number, y'all? 26. 26. And everybody's like, Uh, what the fuck is wrong with her? fuck is wrong with you being my favorite i don't care how many i mean i do care how many grammys niger has but i don't i don't want to talk about that now i got the strippers over they talking about they want some shots some orange drink come on man. i don't really want to talk about this right now he's like well i'm gonna go get that drink and the girls are like man chill out nigga you fucking up the vibe plus he got bring it on the dvd i said damn these motherfuckers about to really be kicking it all this nigga's doing is changing the tire. They talking about getting shots, orange drink. They motherfucking about to watch a DVD. 
these motherfuckers is big time kicking it. Now, my dog, he a big spender at the strip club, so they fucking with it. Like, man, let's see what it is. Now, me ain't no way in hell I'm leaving these five motherfuckers in my living room while I'm outside fixing or something. Automatic no. Excuse me. We can go back to the crib. Y'all are more than welcome to sit in the garage while I fix this tire. And then we're going to head on out. But you hoes, no disrespect. I'm just, just giving you the street lingo. No disrespect. But y'all ain't about to be sitting in my crib drinking up all my drink. And we not. All right, I'm doing this pro bono. Mama ain't raised no fool. They like, man, chill. You killing the vine. She go outside. She like, uh, you gonna ask me my name? He said, uh, what's your name? She said, my name, Dre. Uh, Dre. She said, you know Marissa? He said, no, I don't know Marissa. He said, yeah. I think you do, nigga. I think you do. Now, he already sent out the tweets that he wouldn't care. If Nigel died, he don't know no songs anyway. He don't care. He's just like, all right, cool. Now, they're getting ready to leave, and the girl, they going at it in here. I mean, they yelling. The leader talking about, girl, you don't care about that associate's agree that you got? So she over here doing a little bit of macking. They get ready to pull off, but you looking at our damn star, Dre. And she looking out the window. We're like, man, what's wrong with her? What's she about to do? Because this Benz is dirty as a motherfucker. But we thinking, what is she about to do? She talking about, I'll be back. I got to use the bathroom. She goes in the house, and she pulls a Lucille on us. She goes to the kitchen. She goes and gets that iron skillet. Oh, and it's on. She creeps into the bathroom. She's like, yeah, this nigga taking a shower. Bad. She getting ready. Now, this iron skillet is going to knock a nigga back. If you ain't prepared, it's going to knock a nigga back. And if you in the shower, you're going to slip. You're going to be trying to grab on the curtains. It's over with. But he come in like, hey, what are you doing? It wouldn't have been no, what are you doing? As soon as I come in that bathroom and I see that skillet in her hand, I'm on her ass. I'm on her ass. Let me just give you a heads up. Don't prank me and have a skillet in my bathroom. I'm on your ass. First thing that's kicking in is one of us got to go, and I don't plan on going. She was in there looking. Oh, man, I would have been on her ass. It wouldn't have been no, hey, what are you doing? It wouldn't have been no, hey, what are you doing? I do getting something. At this point, this is pure survival. I don't care. It's a nigga in your bathroom with a skillet. The only thing I know that a skillet can do is fry some shit. And trust me, nigga, we ain't having ham booty tonight, so I ain't getting fried up by nobody. Nobody. I already told y'all how I feel about you. I like to be comfortable. I'm getting naked. At my crib, he walking around the road. He probably naked. He even got his ass fried up naked. You can't let that happen in your own house. You have the right to defend yourself. When I came in there and seen that motherfucker skillet back like this, ah. Oh, this is exactly how that motherfucker would have been. If I came in there and seen that skillet, I'm going to show y'all exactly what happened. I would have came in there and seen that skillet. Man, I'm leaving the room. I'm coming back with something, and I'm about to fuck you up. <laughs> If you in my bathroom, and I know that's my skillet, I know that's my skillet, and you got my skillet in my bathroom when I'm about to hop in the shower, I'm whooping your ass. Anybody, don't be in my bathroom with a skillet. 
I'm walking in the room and I'm walking like, what the fuck? Did I just see what I thought I saw? Did I see a nigga in there with a motherfucking skillet? I don't want to hear nothing. She was about to kill this nigga over nothing. But she ready, though. He come in here, and he a fool with it. He talk about, hey, what are you doing? Bop! Got his ass. One good hit. Now, he did attempt to fight back. We didn't see that from uh, Khalid. He just went straight down. This guy's fighting back. And at this point, it's like, all right, bro. We get it because we seen what happened. We seen that she was about to kill you over a tweet. So he's defending himself right now. But the girls are like, where is she at? What is she boobooing? What is she boobooing? They come in the house. And what they see is this big ass nigga on top of her. So they thinking that he trying to get some. When this nigga is defending his life, they don't even know that this nigga has a goddamn frying pan engraved on the side of this nigga's head. That motherfucker knocked him out. When he got hit, that nigga hit the wall. If that wall wasn't there, he wouldn't get up. It would have been over with. That wall saved him temporarily. Now, now he didn't fell into the bathtub. He got water in his face. He discombobulated head just a throbbing. He gain streak. He get up. He going at it now. We like, oh, shit. What's she about to do? How's she going to get this nigga off him? But the girls come in and they save her because they were like, man, we know she ain't taking no boo-boo in there. They come in. They start stomping them out. Bow, bow, bow. They not knowing that this nigga just got struck with lightning, a fucking iron skillet to the side of the dome for a tweet last year. They don't know this, so they just come in and they bow, bow. They stomping this nigga. He getting his ass whooped. He trying to tell them why he holding the back of his head talking about, man, she just hit me with a goddamn skillet, nigga. A fucking skillet. Get your ass off of me. That bitch tried to kill me. But they ain't trying to hear that. So they whooping this nigga ass. Bah, bah, bah. Ah, ah. You know that head still throbbing. Do, 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 do. He choking her out. They kicking him on the side of the face. So shit, it's going crazy as hell. Motherfucking the leader pick up my nigga Tonk. Tonk is trying to defend himself. Dre on the ground looking. She was like, I didn't think this nigga was going to fight back. I thought I was going to knock this nigga out. Motherfucking stripper friend number two. She come out. Bop, bop, bop. She get him twice in the chest. I'm like, God damn it. Everybody looking like, what the fuck did you do? Did she was, hey, we didn't call the police. They even trying to take some. They all looking at her. She looking at the strippers. They looking at her because, nigga, who gonna believe this story? It's gonna look like y'all tried to rob this man. This nigga was fighting for his life. They gonna see that big ass skillet on the back of his head. Like, why was this nigga... If y'all were just trying to, you know what I'm saying, get him off of her, why does this nigga have a skillet on the back of his head? This shit says made in the USA right here. We can see the skillet symbol right here. Made in the USA. She's like, we could just call the police. They're like, ain't nobody gonna believe this shit. Ain't no one gonna believe this. Dre is like, hey, uh, I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna go to the car. So they trying to figure some shit out. And get... Hey, let me tell you, she ain't wrong. I would have did the same thing. That motherfucker dipped out on their ass. They said, how are we going to believe this? They ran outside. Hey, come back. This motherfucker gone. She just skirted off on him, man, left the body with them. This is loosely based on something that actually have A nigga got hit with a skillet. I mean, no, you RIP to him if he, if he did, man. Like, not making fun of it, but damn. I got to see if the skillet part is true. Now we got to look up the girl that they talk about. Man, this is the end of the episode anyway, ain't it? Oh, yeah. She got to be the text message. So they sent off the messages. I miss you. I miss you, too. And then there's a message that says, we're just getting started. 
And then there was some bubbles at the end because the last thing we seen was bubbles as it was a, a message was going to come back. We're just getting started. So this is her phone with the message from Marissa. I miss you too. Wait. Yeah, right is her phone. Left is them. So she texts herself back. We're just getting started from Marissa's phone. That's what this is doing right now. This is this is a message that she sent herself from Marissa's phone. Man, well, let's see what this is based off of. Oh, okay. We're going to figure it out, though. Since y'all don't want to help me, I'm going to have to watch the other episodes. At the beginning of almost every episode of the series form, viewers are informed that we're about to watch is based on real life events. This is not a work of fiction. Any similarity to persons living or dead or actual events is intentional. We are told. And then before the first episode begins, the screen says Houston, Texas. All right, bet. This is on uh, Decider.com. Donald Glover and Janie Neighbors, Nobbers, Neighbors. They've been very clear that Swarm was inspired by Beyonce and her fan army, the Beehive, or Beehive, my bad. My bad, Bay. <laughs> and many of details about Nyjah directly lead back to Queen Bay. Obvious is that the fact is the fan base is sworn by blah, blah, blah. All right, we get all of that. All right, we get all of that. The co creator neighbors explain the suicide was inspired by internet rumors circulating about a young woman from Houston named Marissa Jackson who killed herself after listening to Lemonade when it first came out in April of 2016. On the same night, there was a rumor about a woman named Marissa who committed it after watching this visual album because it was basically confirmed that a very powerful man was cheating on one of the most incredibly beautiful and successful pop stars of our time. Oh, my goodness. I'm here from Houston, Texas, and my very best friend's name, last name is Jackson. There was a lot of text between Houstonians being like, yo, who is Marissa Jackson? Is this story true? And that existed on the internet for a while, and people were tweeting really horrible things about this woman who had killed herself and making fun of her. So there was no evidence that there was a real Marissa Jackson. All right, so is there actually a Beyonce super fan who was on a murder streak? No. Even though a true crime documentary in episode six of Swarm appears to tell the true story of Andrea Dre Green and features a meta interview with Donald Glover about her being an inspiration for his very own show, we're watching. Hmm, all right. So we need to look up the true story of Andrea Dre Green. All right. Yeah, I might have some clarity after I watch it, but right now we got to look up these people. Now we got to look up these people. All right, Garza. I don't know how credible they are. Let me see. Several real life stories that neighbors and the show writers combined. Neighbors told LA Times, we did research for months, basically find events between 16 and 18 that we could put our main character in. So it's really not a work of fiction. 
We've taken real internet rumors, real murders, and combined them into a narrative for our main character. Dre, not much of it is fabricated. So all this shit is like, it's different stories that went on during that time, and they putting her into them. Now I want to know all the murders that were real, like, and know the true stories behind them. Murder in Tennessee by strippers. All right. Let me look that up real quick. Damn. Man, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button, man. We about to go on a little deep dive real quick. We're trying to figure some things out. Man. Just a couple of questions we need answered. Not too much. You know what I'm saying? Not, not overboard or anything, but there's some questions that need to be answered. They're telling me that there's some strippers in Tennessee that killed somebody. So this is in 2017. Uh, four strippers killed Good Samaritan who helped. Oh, damn. That's fucked up. August 5th, 2017. Oh, Okay. No, nah, we ain't disabling nothing. We ain't got no money, man. All right, so here go the story of uh, a tonk. Man, all disrespect to all four of these motherfucking murderers. These were some terrible looking strippers. I'm just going to get that out of the way. These fucking murderers. It's fucked up, man. All right, let's see what this story talking about. Let's see how they story went down. Did they hit this nigga with a goddamn skillet? Four strippers killed Good Samaritan who have changed flat tire. August 5th, 2017. Uh, four adult entertainers stripped a man of his life after he helped them change a flat tire, police said. Brittany, Ponisha, Johnisha, Letitia from Memphis. In Nashville, have all been charged with first degree murder, armed criminal action, and unlawful use of a weapon in a connection with Ralph Cross, August 1st death at his home in, uh, in Missouri. Cross, 55, repeatedly bought a new tire for the women and allowed them to stay in his home while he worked on their vehicle. See, just from me watching it, I already knew you can't have him up in the house. Damn. Shit, just trying to help motherfuckers out, bro. And they take your life, man. Uh, he bought a new tire for the women and allowed them to stay in his house while he worked on their vehicle. The women reportedly stayed at his house until Cross body was discovered there Tuesday morning. What? It said the woman reportedly stayed at his house until Cross's body was discovered there on Tuesday morning. The woman may have used a 9mm handgun to kill Cross, investigators say. Mississippi County Sheriff Brandon said Curry pulled the trigger. He died of a gunshot wound to the back. Cross was last seen at his house around 6.30 a.m. August 1st, the day he died. A witness saw Cross arguing with three women while the fourth woman remained in a white car parked outside his house. Damn. The witness said that he, as he walked toward his home, he heard a noise and saw three women leave Cross's home and enter the white car. The witness said he heard one of the women who was in a car say that Cross was tripping and do not go back in there. The sheriff said the woman killed Cross after robbing him. Investigators said the couch Cushions were ruffled, and that pockets of pants belonging to Cross had been turned out. Other evidence pointed to a robbery, too. The woman turned themselves in to Mississippi County Sheriff's Office August 3rd after friends and family who had seen their pictures from surveillance footage and news 
persuaded them. Damn. So they chilled at this nigga's house after killing them. And it took their family members persuading them to go tell their side of the story and turn themselves in. I mean, that's, I ain't gonna lie. That's cool how they implemented that. Like, cause I didn't know nothing about this story. I probably did hear about it, but it, you know, shit. But it, I, I do like RIP to cross, but I like how they integrated. That was cool. That was cool. I ain't gonna lie. That was cool. That was smooth right there. That's some hey, I don't know, man. That's the kind of story I like to come up with. When I be telling these stories and putting myself in these shows, those are the kind of stuff like this shit good. I like this now. Now that I know it's based off of real crimes. Hey, that shit tight. I'm about to watch. I might, what is it, 10 o'clock? I might get over here and watch at least two more. All right, let's finish this up. All right. None of the women admitted to the murder or identify what role they played in. Curry, Taylor, Simmons, and Dotson are being held in separate facilities without bond. All right, we need to see what else happened with these motherfuckers. What they get? What they get charged with? Both strippers. I got to get the names out of here. No, nah, I can't. We go off my time. There's only 10 out here. There's only 10 out here. Damn, they had a 19-year-old with them. These motherfuckers is ruthless, nigga. That shit ain't right, bro. That's just fucked up. I was gonna put Britney's name in there by herself, but I'm sure Ponisha Taylor is probably gonna be the only, like the only Ponisha Taylor. Here we go. This is Brittany Curry. She was 28 in 2016. Look what life would do to your ass. 30 years old. From 28 to 30. Look at this shit that did to her ass. Fuck all that. Let's see how much time she got. Tennessee woman is headed to prison. Brittany Curry, 30. Memphis, Tennessee. Entered a guilty plea. Second degree. Sentence of 16 years. Man. That should be, man, that should be at least 40 years. So she got 16 years. What the other girls get? Run concurrently with a four-year sentence heading it down March. Oh, so she got caught stealing last year. What, a year before? Along with Brittany Curry, Ponisha Taylor, Janisha, turn themselves in and acknowledge. Yeah, we got to figure out what time they got all these other motherfuckers with. No, nah, you think it's going to be a long live after episode seven? All right, man, we're going to see. This is pretty cool, man. We turned two episodes into four hours. I'm going to look up a little more into these stories, too, though. I'm going to look more into these stories. That's cool. Yeah, Ashley. Well, we about to get off here, though, man. We got four hours in off of, you know, I just watched these episodes today. I don't know when we're going to do three and four. We're going to do them sometime this week, hopefully. Hopefully, we'll do them sometime this week. So it won't be too long in between. But that's the downside of them dropping all the episodes at once. But make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I'm going to get off of here, man. You know, I'm trying to chill tomorrow. Let me have one day. Come on, one day. Give me one day. Let me get one day to chill. Thursday, we got, of course, snowfall. First reaction to power. 
Friday power. I don't know, man. Unless Simply is sending me some, then I probably ain't going to buy another box, man. I'm probably going to be on some hen dog this weekend. But we're going to see. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Right now, I'm really fucking with the swarm. Or my bad, just I'm fucking with swarm. It ain't the swarm. The swarm is some other show. But swarm is pretty good, man. Dre on the rampage. He killing everybody. Everybody can get it. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. Hit that like button. Support the channel. Cash apps at the bottom of the screen. Thank y'all for... And I'm about to get out of here. I might go get some breakfast in the morning. Breakfast and a coffee don't sound bad. We'll see. But hey, make sure you hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Y'all, I'm out this thing, man. Y'all be safe.